Welcome to the doghouse at DeKalb, Illinois, Northern Illinois, in Ball State with Al Harris. I'm Brian Davis, and folks, you have missed first blood. Northern Illinois, 0-7, looking for their first victory of the season and trying to break a Division 1A worst 14-game losing streak, has just put the ball into the end zone, a 22-yard run by Ivory Bryant. Great job by their offensive line, just blowing gaping holes through Ball State's uh, defense. This is what they wanted to do. They were a young team. They needed to get out on top, give those youngsters some confidence. You think about their rosters, two-thirds freshmen and sophomores, so they needed to make plays like that. This is a game that Northern Illinois thought that it could win, not that it should win. Remember, Ball State won the Mid-American Conference a year ago, 8-4, 7-1 in the league, en route to a berth in the Las Vegas Bowl. But graduation and injury have taken a serious toll on the Cardinal program. They come into this game today Two and six, one and four in the MAC. The kickoff by Brian Clark is taken by the up back and a big pile at about the 33 yard line. So Ball State will start working from the hole. They're down seven to nothing here in the early going. We have eight and a half minutes remaining in the first quarter at Northern Illinois. And you have to know that Coach Novak, he's just letting it all go. He's letting it all hang out with reverses. You know, he's opened up the pass game quite a bit. We'll tell you a little bit more about how the Huskies got to the house after we established things for the Ball State offense. Under center is the quarterback, Jake Josetti, in the handoff to James Terrell out of Bradley Bourbonnet High School. A three and a half yard per carry average on this season. He's touched the ball 64 times. He gets a little bit more than that on that carry, an eight yard gain. Are you seeing the he makes some nice cuts, just cuts back in there. Good blocking by that old line. The yep. Huskies have to put some shoulder pass on that guy. He's going to have a lot of yards against him. In the eye. And the handoff to Kevin Cartwright. And a big hole up the middle. And he is deep into Northern Illinois territory before he is brought down. Kevin Cartwright, a four and a half yard a carry guy. He is a workhorse, and this is a three-man rotation yep. for Ball State. We haven't seen their best guy yet, for those of you who have just joined us live on Sports Channel. No, we haven't seen more, Leandro Moore yet, but as you can see here from the end zone, just basically just going right up that pipe. Nice blocking on the inside. He's hitting it hard in there. They need to, they need to uh, tighten it up right on the inside a little bit. 16-yard gain. First and 10. Ball State at the Husky hey, 42. Josetti. The handoff to Cartwright. Cuts back. Missed tackle figures in that play. Cartwright brought down at about the 36-yard line. One of the things that happens with a young team, Brian, sometimes you get so excited after scoring a touchdown, you sometimes forget you have to go do your job on defense. And, and they need to get guys to the ball. I know I talked with Mike... Mallory, he was talking about getting guys to the ball carrier. Right now, you see one guy making the tackle. Mallory, the defensive coordinator here in DeKalb, the tackle by Patrick Steven, junior free safety. Once again, just said he barking out the signals, lone setback. That's Leandre Moore, and he turns the corner, and he is brought down at about the 32-yard line. Let's introduce the fans to Leandre Moore. 614 yards he is now sitting on the best single season performance of his career leandre moore needs 99 yards or needed 99 yards coming into this game today to reach 2,000 on what has been a fine career he's also a heck of a kickoff returner yes, had a 92 yard kickoff return as ball state rallied for a big victory against central michigan a week ago Now the swing pass, and he overshoots Larry Davis, a well, rising is, star who is one of a couple of guys on this team that has got really deep burning speed. Yes, he does, Brian. You know, one of the things that they're concerned about with Jake Josetti, their starting quarterback, he's very inconsistent. His, his pass percentage is only 48%. He's a guy who likes to go downfield a lot, so watch for him to really try to stretch that defense, but he's not a very accurate passer. Coaches have been trying to get him to get rid of the ball quicker. One of the things, as we look at Josetti's season stats and look at the touchdown-to-interception ratio, he is minus two. They want him to get rid of the ball quicker. They like the fact that he's got the rifle arm, but they want him to improve on the short and intermediate routes. Now the handoff to James Terrell, and he bowls his way down on the first down play, second down play, check that, to about the 25-yard line. 
depending on the spot of Northern Illinois. Well, one of the things that they're doing, they're attacking right in the interior of that defense for uh, the Huskies, and they really have to tighten it up quite a bit. You have Steve Smith in there, who's their, their outstanding linebacker. He's very active in there, but I know on the inside, those tackles have to really tighten it up in there. It's going to be a long day for him. Gain of six. He was brought down on the play by T-Rex, Terrell Alexander, the right defensive end out of Rich East High School, Gisetti. Once again, the handoff to James Terrell. This time he waggles left, and he's inside the 20-yard line and close to a first down. In fact, it is a first down as Ball State gets into the red zone where they have had a great deal of success this year. 18 trips inside the opponent's 20-yard line, nine touchdowns, seven field goals. Well, I think it's almost a 90% uh, conversion rate into points, so they're very dangerous down at this point, obviously. Just outside, the ball spotted at the 21-yard line of Northern Illinois. Giuseppe, uh, Giuseppe working out of the eye, and the hand off to Cartwright. He slips one tackle and bowls his way down to about the 18-yard line. This is what Ball State wants to do. They basically want to do that three-pronged attack with the three running backs, just wear the Huskies out in between the in between the tackles basically tackled by glenn bloodsaw backup middle linebacker and also patrick stephen see see one of the problems they're having there they got to get their feet under their ball carrier uh, sell over right there 42 he just got his feet out there you have to keep your feet underneath your pad so you can get in a good position to tackle cartwright the lone setback receivers right and left cartwright into the middle and he is tied up by steve smith and then hammered down by Donovan Carter, the strong safety for Northern Illinois. First and goal, nonetheless. The one thing watching, the, watching them against Toledo last week, because I think Toledo was the top-ranked team in the MAC, they seem to be a lot more fired up as far as the defense for the Huskies are concerned, but they don't seem to have that emotional flair, and they don't seem to be getting after it like they did last week, and they better get their motor revs in a hurry. First and goal from the nine. Once again, Ball State operates out of the eye and the handoff to leandre moore steps aside one tackler and gets down deep to about the two yard line nice move very nice move this guy has very quick feet he's a kick returner as we as uh, brian shared earlier they're just attacking the inside of those guys just getting very good movement on their defensive lineman there as you saw there uh stankowski he couldn't keep his feet they have to tighten it up in there they may have to do some more slanting to keep that big offensive line off balance Second down and goal from the two-yard line after the gain of seven. You hear a guy described as a darter. That's what they're talking about. Now, yeah. timeout is called as Gisetti wants to talk things over with his coaches. Northern Illinois has the lead, but Ball State is knocking on the door at DeKalb. Must be a kind of blind love. I can't see anyone but you. tenacity the teamwork <laughs> women's big 10 volleyball is back on sports channel it's the same action-packed game crammed into two hours that means double the digs double the spikes in double time women's big 10 volleyball exclusively on sports channel It was real special because I never lost a game in high school. I really didn't understand. After getting that back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back years, you learn fast. That was sports that was the purest thing. The camaraderie, the discipline, work habits. Enjoy it. I mean, go out and play. You never know when your last play will be. You never know if you'll make it to the next level. So play as though it's your last game. The IHSA State Football Championships are coming Thanksgiving weekend on Sports Channel. Northern Illinois with a 7-0 lead, but Ball State at the Huskies' two-yard line, second and goal. The handoff to Moore is tripped up, regains his feet, fumbles the football, it's fumbled out of the end zone.
touchback. Now, the... oh, see, this is the kind of play they needed to get in there. You see, see, that was Steve Smith shot right through there. Steve Smith, the middle linebacker, did a great job of stripping him there. And they get a touchback out of that play. Last well, touch to Kevin Sellover. The Huskies' leading tackler. I was waiting for the call from the officials, and in fact, it is Northern Illinois ball. Whoa! I stand corrected here. They give they give him the ball on the two-yard line, though. How about that? Last touch wins the battle. Last touch, last touch, but that's the penetration they need in there. Big defensive stop for Northern Illinois. Yes, indeed. Steve Smith leads this team. It tackles for loss. He had a huge sack on Ball State's first drive. And so once again, the Huskies operating. They got 98 yards to go to the house. Now, Chris Finland, freshman quarterback, the handoff to fellow freshman Ivory Bryant. Let's introduce you to Chris Finland. Last week, 13 of 22 for 200 yards and a touchdown. Finland, a walk on from Rockton Hononega High School. An eight yard gain for Ivory Bryant second and two and the interesting thing about their backfield they have an all freshman backfield now out of the eye and the handoff again to Bryant and he's got enough for a first down so the Huskies get yep. the ball out of danger they are moving the ball with authority on their scoring drive which folks you missed as we watch the end of the Rutgers game the Huskies completed plays of 18 and 17 yards consecutively to get into Cardinals territory. And then again, Ivory Bryant's 22 yard run into the end zone for his third touchdown of the season. One thing he's got to watch is the fumble thing. He's put the ball on the ground and lost it three times this season. Receivers right and left. Bryant, the lone setback, he takes the handoff to the near side and he is one on one and just daring Keon Laws <laughs> to take him down. Well that's you know that's what we call putting a Rydell in somebody's chest there. I don't know if the helmets <laughs> are still Rydells but that was the old expression we had there. And what's this physical run here? This tells you this guy is ready. See that corner Laws has to get his shoulder underneath or else he's gonna have a he's gonna have a weld on his chin. Keon but, uh, Laws, the MAC co-defensive player of the week last week. What a game he had. 23 tackles, two interceptions, which the Cardinals turned into 10 points. And he's playing out with three pins in his hand. The handoff and Bryant for a moment looked like he had a lot of daylight, sure but it closes up in a hurry. They did a good job of closing that up in there. But you can tell Bryant is starting to get his rhythm. He's getting excited about that. Running backs love having the ball a lot. Got a player down. And that's Bryant. Tackle made by yes indeed and now he's going to get a little bit of medical assistance. He was brought down by a couple of Chicago area guys. The Mac is a conference that draws a lot from this yes, region. Do. Leonard Flowers out of Lane Tech the big defensive tackle and Jeff Phelps the off uh, the outside linebacker from Crete Money High School. Flowers put a pretty good helmet on him also Phelps in there. I think he might have taken a shot from uh, Flowers. He's a big old guy who put it on him pretty good so there he is. Ivory Bryant as a senior in high school in Fort Wayne, Indiana, a finalist for that state's Mr. Football. Look at his numbers today. Six yards a carry. Compare that to his 3.6 yard a carry average for the season. That's very good observation. That means those guys are getting off the football. That offensive line of Merrill, Wise, uh, Cockrum, all those guys are getting off the football really well right now. And here's Gary Pryor. And he's spun down and tackled for a loss. And Flowers is making his presence felt, a Chicago guy. Obviously, he knows people back home are watching him here. And also, Wilbur McDonald, also another Chicago guy, number 56. He's a big play guy for them. He has eight sacks, so we'll have to keep an eye out on that number 56, especially in the passing game. Leonard Flowers came into this game with five tackles for loss. He's got himself another one there as he brings down Pryor. Another freshman tailback for Joe Novak and the Huskies. Offset eye, now some motion, and the pitch to Pryor. And he is once again brought down for a loss, and once again he's brought down for a loss by Leonard Flowers. Flowers is <laughs> Flowers is trying to take this game over. He's saying, not at, not at this time. 
But see, one of the things when you lose your your back who has such good rhythm in there, like Bryant, sometimes it takes, you know, it's a different kind of back. And uh, Bryant was just hitting in between the tackles, making good yardage. Help on the tackle from another Chicago guy, Wilbur McDonald, defensive end out of Mount Carmel High School. He also played some JUCO at Harper College. Third and 12, receivers split to the left side. In motion, the tight end in the handoff to Bryant is back in the game, but he's not nearly where he needs to be. And so after going two of three on third downs in their touchdown drive, and remember, Northern Illinois under 21% on third down for the season. This time, the Huskies are thwarted. Yes, they are. And, you know, you have to look at that. Flowers is basically was, was just controlling him up at the line of scrimmage. But, Brian, he just comes through there. But he was out for those two plays that hurt him. Kent Baker kicks it away. And, oh, man, he didn't get any room at all to catch that ball. Tim Giesman, the punt returner, and he is taken down. And they're going to get some extra yardage out of that yeah, because sure the coverage was just a little bit too tight. Justin McCarron's a little bit too anxious. Now, what? here's a guy who's got a lot of potential. Well, we have to see here. Did he signal for a fair catch? But still, he needs no. two yards. Even in a college rule, you have to give them two yards, even if he doesn't signal for a fair catch. And that's just a freshman mistake. He's a true freshman, and uh, you have to learn that. That's exactly right. I say he's got some potential, but he's young. He's going to do things like that. Seven to nothing. Northern Illinois has scored and made a big stand. We'll be back to the Calvin in just a moment on Sports Channel. Announcing a sale so big, it's scary. It's the North Aurora Auto Mall's monster sale, where you'll find a giant selection of over 1,500 vehicles in stock, all at spectacular prices. So, so why torture yourself shopping all over for a car? You'll find it all during the monster sale at the North Aurora Auto Mall. Jerry and his friends sure love the big picture and sound on Zenith 60 inch TV. We got the two big centers ready to jump. In fact, they love it so much, they're actually considering getting one of their own. Zenith. Big enough to share. But who wants to? 40 bucks a swan gets up. You're on. Hi, I'm Tom Peck Jr. from Tom Peck Ford in Hampshire, Illinois. Stop and visit my brother Bob and I. We have all the services of big city dealerships with none of the pressure. All Ford dealers pay the same for their cars and trucks, so doesn't it make sense to deal with a small, family-owned dealership? Check out our remaining 96s and our 97s that are arriving daily, and don't forget about our free service loaners. We're at Tom Peck Ford, just 20 minutes east of Belvedere on Route 72 in Hampshire, Illinois. Ball State takes over first and 10 from its own 35-yard line after the punt plus penalty. And now on a play action, Jake Josetti back, and now he's got that intermediate route, and does he ever have it? The completion to Adrian Reese. To Adrian Reese, who, instead of taking the ball and firing upfield, decided to dance a little bit, and it cost him as he is brought down on the play by Dan Stankowski dropping back into coverage from defensive tackle. <laughs> this is probably coming off one of those zone blitz type of things. But you see, they just run a crossing route off of a play action, and that's what happens when you establish that running game. You have plenty of time. See, he didn't realize how wide open he was even. I think he thought someone was right behind him. Well, he got slowed up also by Patrick Steven and Orlando Bowen, and now the handoff up the gut on the first and 10 play from the Northern Illinois 47. One of the things that uh, Ball State has been doing, they've also been rotating their guards and tackles uh, during the game. They've, they've had a lot of injuries right now. You know, they have a lot of uh, young guys as well. So they've been trying to rotate not only their running backs, but their guards and their uh, tackles as well. James Terrell out of Bradley Bourbonnet High School. Tackled by, well, Stankowski has got tackles on consecutive plays as we reach the end of the first quarter here at Northern Illinois and the Huskies bidding for their first victory of the season with a 7 to nothing lead on Ball State.
Pepsi theft. It can happen anywhere, anytime. Fight back. Introducing the Pepsi Club. Now Pepsi moments don't have to become anxious moments. Excuse me. What you were about to see did not actually happen, <laughs> but it could happen. They took everything! Look, Ma, the Pepsi Club works. Not today. Thank you, Pepsi Club. Pepsi, Generation Next. Available in six packs. Welcome back, ladies. I trust you had a great summer. Professor Casey Jones in the house. Now let's move right to your assignment, Miss Azy. How I spent my summer vacation by Jennifer Azy. Cooked my favorite fall. Worked hard at relaxing. Pumped up with some future Olympians. Furnished my new house. Relaxed with mom and dad. Got ready for the season. Cooled down with a friend. Practiced my shooting. I got away from it all. But now it's time. For basketball season. The ABL. We're in this thing to win. Hey, that's the way to unload on him now. Keep hitting it. Get a drive going, score some damn points. Jailbreak, jailbreak. Watch the damn ball. We're okay, too far. Let's go. I'm Hub Arthur. Join Tom Waddle, Dan Hampton, and me for Pro Football Weekly every Friday night at 10:30 on Sports Channel. Chilly day in DeKalb, but the fans warmed up by the fact that their team's got a lead after a quarter. This copyrighted broadcast is presented for the entertainment and non-commercial use of our audience. Any reproduction or other use of this program without the written consent of Sports Channel is strictly prohibited. Just said he back to pass, and he nails his tight end, Jimmy Place, for a good completion on the near sideline. Place, Place is then driven out of bounds by Donovan Carter, the primary tackler on the play. Well, you know, that's what happens. Once again, when you get that established, it happens. That, that way. Well, if you sit here in the first quarter, you can see the total yards. NIU just doing an excellent job. They have very balanced offense there. Even though, you know, it's quite a bit more rushing, it still has some nice passes in there. Time of possession. You want to keep that defense off the field. But once again, they made the stop. Actually, Ball State turned the ball over, and here's Cartwright, and he's roped down. He tried to break away from two guys, primarily Perry Amu, the weak side linebacker out of Downers Grove North High School. Amu was having none of it. He brings Cartwright down, but again, a decent gain of six, second and four at the 23-yard line. Amu is a very small guy. He's only 197 pounds playing outside linebacker, so I'm sure they're going to try to attack him. One of the storylines here, we mentioned that Northern is 0-7, one of five teams in Division 1A looking for its first victory of the season. The game we just left, Pittsburgh held Rutgers winless. The Scarlet Knights falling to 0-8 as once again Leandre Moore charges into the middle of the line. See, uh, Dan Stankowski does a nice job getting off the block there. Gets his shoulders around. See, that's the, the inside people. They have to take authority in there because when you run up that middle, people dominate you up that middle. It just sends a mental picture to the rest of your team that you're just being physically manhandled. So that was a great job by him. Gain of one. Northern Illinois actually pretty good on third down. Sixth in the MAC at 39%, a shade under, but they're not going to get it this time. And as a matter of fact, Leandre Moore almost gets away from Donovan Carter. Credit Carter with a touchdown saving tackle inside the 10 yard line. First and goal, I think it will be for Ball State. Let's see, they're just dominating right now in the line of scrimmage. They're just doing a good, Kate 53 just does an excellent job walling off. And if it wasn't for the sure tackle of Donovan Carter, it would have been six easy. Me and my big mouth, they're just outside the 10 yard line so they can actually get another first down without scoring. Out of the eye, Jake Josetti, born in Evanston, by the way, hands off to Terrell, James Terrell, and he's around the corner, and he's finally forced out of bounds again. Donovan Carter all of a sudden is a real busy guy on the Northern Illinois defense inside the five-yard line at about the two. Well, you don't want your safeties making all the tackles. Here they were in a basic counter OT there. They just push out Perry Amu there. And just very good running by James Terrell. They don't want to have their safeties matching up, making too many tackles, because that shows you there's a problem up front. Eight-yard gain. 
One receiver split to the far side out of the eye. Joe Setti, the handoff to Terrell. This time he breaks a tackle and he gets into the house. Touchdown, Ball State. Broke the tackle as Steve Smith spun around to the right side and he scores for the Cardinals. Well, unfortunately, there's not other guys getting to the ball. See, you have Steve Smith up there. He gets the play. He should have wrapped him up. But if you can slow up back down a little bit to get him spin around, you should have other guys pursuing and making the tackle. And that's one thing I haven't really seen from the defense so far. And this is a, let's, let's remember, this is a very, very young team that's searching for its identity, searching for its confidence. For the extra point, Brent Locklear, who may be a candidate for the Lou Groza Award. The kick is up and good, and so we are tied at seven off of an eight-play, 66-yard drive that took only two minutes and 44 seconds, even early second quarter at DeKalb. Mid-American Conference, I think, is great for Northern Illinois University. I've played in it. I've coached in it at other schools. I've got a lot of respect for the Mid-American Conference. Fans can come to the games, and our fans can get to the games, and we're thrilled to get back in the league and have a chance to fight for a conference championship again. It's back-to-back -back Mac action when Northern takes on Ohio University on November 1st. Then, on November 8th, Eastern Michigan enters the doghouse for the home season finale. NIU football is back in the Mac. See you this fall. College Football Saturday continues on Sports Channel. Delon Washington is among the many weapons in the Trojans' arsenal. Oregon storms the Coliseum for a Pac-10 war with USC. Tonight at 9.30 on Sports Channel. Who can offer you a three-day exchange policy on any used car they sell? Fox Valley Ford in Aurora, home of the used car 100% satisfaction guarantee. See Fox Valley Ford in the North Aurora Auto Mall, Orchard Road, and I-88. We began as a castle on a hill, educating teachers to teach others. A century later, education remains our business. 22,000 students, six undergraduate colleges, a law school, and over 900 outstanding faculty today make Northern one of the nation's leading comprehensive universities. We've grown over the years, but our job remains the same, to teach, to explore, to inspire. Northern Illinois University, honoring our heritage by building futures. 26 yards for Leandre Moore at just under 640 yards for the season. He is sitting on a new career high. He is, but as you watch this nice pull there, see, right there, he makes, the uh, Smith misses the tackle there, but no one else is coming up there. But James Terrell, that's his first touchdown of the year. Looked out like that they were sorry that was James Terrell. Yeah, James Terrell, he just, you know, it's really his first touchdown of the year. Not a very big guy. Here's Deion Mitchell off the kickoff, and he is driven down at the 29-yard line by Kevin Cartwright. Guy plays tail, also plays special teams. I'll tell you what, he's a pretty big specimen as well. Six foot one and 211 pounds. 14-yard return for Deion Mitchell. Well, you get rotated in there a lot like they do with their running backs. Those guys are going to stay fresh. So first and 10 for the Huskies from their own 30-yard line. Chris Finland working with receivers split to either side, and Ivory Bryant in the backfield is the lone setback. Takes the handoff, rolls back the other way. He's got his tight end. That's Kevin Holm, and he is buried. Out of bounds at midfield, but not before a good gain. He was taken out by Howard Sims, the senior middle linebacker. Again, he is Ball State's leading tackler and third in the MAC coming into this game. Now they do a counter there uh, off the run. They establish a run. He just comes from the left side, just does a, a really nice job of getting out and open. That's a tough play to cover. Home out of Buffalo Grove High School. So first and 10 at the 46-yard line, and now Ivory Bryant tries to go off right tackle, and he gets nothing. You know, one of the things that you're trying to do as, a, as an offensive coordinator on both sides of the ball is really establish that running game, because when you establish a running game, it opens up the pass. Met by the senior quarterback, Raphael Ball, had that sniffed out in a big way. Ball, not sure exactly what the story is, but he did not start the game today. He is in the lineup now. One suspects that perhaps he had a little problem with the coaches or something. Could be, but uh, he must have settled that problem in a hurry. Well, he's one-on-one -on -one across the line from Deion Mitchell now. 
as on second and nine, Chris Finland marks out the signals. Again, back to pass. He's got time. He puts it downfield looking for Mitchell. Up. He's got the ball. He makes the catch. 20-yard line. They gave it to him. Ball State defense says no. He juggled, and now we've got another official coming in, ruling incomplete. And thus it shall be. Third and nine. That's a tough one. You know, one of the things Ball has been susceptible to is a double move there. But he obviously juggles the football. Goes up. And I did you know something? It, yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Good, Good call. call by the official. Good call. Good call by the official. It's tough for us to see and the fans to see a lot of times where that's a good call. But see, the ball's been hanging up for him. Finland had the guy wide open, but that ball's been hanging up. It is a little bit windy down there. One of the things that happens here at Northern Illinois, ever since they built the stands on the far sideline, the winds swirl in a major way. Big block for Finland to get the ball off, but Ball, speaking of Raphael, comes in and he knocks the ball down. Good pass breakup, his seventh of the year. Dion Mitchell, the intended receiver. Well, there is a flag on the play. Yeah, I think they had motion against uh, the Huskies there. So that might give him a break. They're going to decline oh, they're it. They're going to decline that, obviously. Penalty is declined. I would imagine they're going to go back after Ball there because Ball is susceptible to double moves. Last week he got burned a couple of times, big time by that. So uh, I would expect him number five for uh, Ball State to be busy today. Kent Baker back to punt for Northern Illinois. Tim Giesman. And now a fake. Here's the fake and wide open. Wide open indeed is Rocky Newton. This guy's a quarterback. <laughs> but he has got a big play off the fake punt for Northern Illinois. And the Huskies are very much alive deep in Ball State territory. You have to love what Joe Novak is doing here. He's just saying, hey, let's go after it. Let's go all out and make some plays there. A perfect call. 30 see, yards. See, that was one of the things guys were trying to block the punt. They had a punt block on, and they knew that. They did that from times of study and film, and they see that guys can be open on those kind of plays. When you're desperate for a victory, both these teams really are. But when you're desperate, sometimes you will resort to a little bit of trickery. Just like last week, Ball State came back from 20 points down, scored 29 answered in the fourth quarter, and won in overtime. Today, it's Northern Illinois' turn as Ivory Bryant gets the call on first and 10 from the 23. Well, you got to do, you got to, you know, you got to let the, let it all go. You know, you can't hold back anything. You have nothing to lose. You're 0-7. You have a 14-game losing streak. You're trying to give these kids some confidence. Make some plays. Let them see that you're aggressive enough that you're going for the win. 11 minutes and change remaining in the second quarter. We're tied at 7, Northern Illinois and Ball State. Finland, the handoff to Bryant into the middle of the line, and he doesn't get a whole lot. Met by Howard Sims there. One of their big play guys, their middle linebackers. We got two fine middle linebackers in this game with Sims and Smith for uh, NIU. So they'll be interesting to watch those two guys on their uh, respective teams. We mentioned that the Keon Laws, the defensive back last week for BSU had 23 tackles. I'll tell you what, Howard Sims had 13 tackles. And another guy, the free safety Troy Ramey, whose number we have not called this afternoon yet in the first half, had 15 tackles. And again, a great comeback for them that was sparked by the 92-yard kickoff return by Moore. Northern Illinois operating offensively and once again Bryant gets a good hole on the right side and now flags all over the field that might be a I wonder if that's a little personal foul there clearly something after the play yep. that hurts that hurts because instead of third and two for Northern Illinois, now let's take a look if we can see exactly what happened. Yeah, very, very nice block there. Can't see anybody. Oh, there we go. At, at the top of the screen, you, it's hard to see the guy who made the play right there, but you can see right next to the running back, someone came in a little bit late. 
from that a little bit, quite a bit late. Well, and not uh, what Bill he did Wise. was. Bill Wise, number 64, came in there late. Bill That's Wise. foolish penalty. Knocked the defense, and then Jared Oriski behind over T. Kettle. Yeah, but you want to knock him that way while the ball's in play. That's not exactly after. right. That is exactly right. Because, again, now instead of third and two, you've got a third, or rather a first and 10 of the 23 for an idea. First and 10 play. A first down off that. And now Finland going for Mitchell. And he, wow, <laughs> if knocks he would, it off the crossbar. <laughs> if he would have threw that ball about a few plays ago, that would have been a touchdown. It was like he got always got mixed up with the strength of that ball. Uh, but uh, he's a young guy. He's learning. The line has given him very nice protection there. He's having a little problem with his footing. Just aired that ball out a little too far. Got a holding call against Ball State. So well, a little backing and forthing. Little tit for tat there trading there. Just getting after each other. So the ball is back down to the 16-yard line and another first down for Northern. Again, Let's talk about these swirling winds. Sometimes you let that ball go, and you just don't know what's going to happen. And that thing really was rising. Under center, the Finland receiver split wide to either side, and Bryant, the lone setback, and he is taken down in a big way by Leonard Flowers. Leonard Flowers. I tell you what, this guy is excited to play. They talked about there were a couple of guys from the Chicagoland area that were going to be excited. And this guy is definitely ready. There are 17 players I counted on Ball State's roster who come from the city and suburbs. Flowers again mentioned that he was at Lane Tech. He was an all-Chicago Public League player in his time in high school. Gain of one. Second and nine. And once again, Bryant, this time he gets a little bit more operating room. He's down to the 10-yard line. And he's stopped. Well, here, now we can tell you. We can call Troy Ramey's number. <laughs> the free safety. Who, you know, now this is a guy who had to be checked because he suffered three stingers last week in the Central Michigan game, but he makes the tackle there. Yeah, they, I tell you what, that nice blocks there by Jimmy McDonald came around on a pull. And also Matt Cochran did also. Third and four, Howard Sims, the middle linebacker, had first contact on the play. Offset eye. Receivers to the left side and now the pitch to Bryant as they set the play up that way he's got some pursuit oh great and he play. dives for the stick we'll see if he got the first down he, he needed it. four yards he got it he I'll tell you what he is over 100 I think he's over 100 yards already nice blocking there see Jamie McDonald the senior number 62 made an excellent block on McDonald it reaches out there seeing the first down marker you can tell he's gotten his rhythm early he started to lose the ball 22 carries 107 yards still plenty of time in the first half that's northern illinois rushing total 98 of those yards for ivory bryant to put that in perspective he only has 561 yards for the year flag on the play Nope. Please disregard the flag, and so we shall. 7-7, Northern Illinois and Ball State, mid-second quarter at Husky Stadium in DeKalb. With Al Harris, I'm Brian Davis. And we'll take a break and be back after these words on Sports Channel. The timing, the tenacity, the teamwork. <sighs> Women's Big Ten Volleyball is back on Sports Channel. It's the same action-packed game crammed into two hours. That means double the digs, double the spikes, and double time. Women's Big Ten Volleyball, exclusively on Sports Channel. The most significant factor is I was able to play on the same team as my sister. She won her first three years, so I was all excited thinking she was going to win four state titles. 
and she lost in the semis. When I played the finals, I said, I don't care if I never win another tennis match in my life. This girl is not beating me. She beat my sister. She's going down. It's actually um, kind of a, a double victory in a sense. Monday night, the Blackhawks head north of the border to face off with the Montreal Canadiens. The Hawks hope that Tony Amante and company can get the offense kick-started against the feisty Habs. The first puck drops at 6.30 with the free game at 6, Monday, exclusively on Sports Channel. Bill Lynch, a champion last season. He is 17-14 and 14 now in his third season here at Ball State. Back in the middle 80s, he was offensive coordinator at Northern Illinois under Lee Corso as Ivory Bryant. Takes the handoff. That's his 21st carry of the day. Second and four. He's right at 100 yards. Gain of two. He's running with a lot of authority in there. I mean, he is really bringing it in there tough. You can tell he got in his rhythm very early into the game. And the offensive line is doing an outstanding job, not only of, of making the holes for him, but protecting the quarterback, Chris Finland. Actually... Add another yard to that, second and one, second and goal. And the handoff to Bryant and a big push. Did he get in? We'll see. Matt Cochran made a pretty good block on there, but they did a good job filling up in there. I thought his uh, uh, leg drive would get him in there for a second. Defense held. That was Keon Laws kept him out of there. Keon Laws, the, the Mac player of the week last week, he gets good help there also from Howard Sims. Remember, this guy, Laws, is playing with three pins and a broken hand. You know when he goes in a pile like that, that's got to hurt. Laws does a good job of standing upright for a defensive back. There we are, third and goal at the one-yard line. The handoff to Bryant. This time he does get in. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. I Let's have a look here. Ivory Bryant gets a hug from his fullback, Lou Sponsel. Sponsel actually is the guy who cleared the way for him. He really made a real nice lead block in that play. But I tell you what, this guy is very excited. I don't know if we can get it from this angle, but Sponsel makes a very good block in there. Number 65, Greg Murrow, also does a good job. The center. I watch Murrow, 65, at the center, does a good block. And uh, I missed it there, but uh, Lou Sponsel also did a good job on that lead block there at the middle linebacker, Sims. Ivory Bryant's touchdown, and Brian Clark's 33rd consecutive extra point for Northern Illinois has given the Huskies a 14-7 lead. Folks, you better hang on here because you might see a 200-yard day here. We have 7 minutes and 35 seconds left. And he has over 100 yards already. You can talk all you want about 0-7 against 2-6. Football is football, and this is an entertaining football game, and Ivory Bryant has been about one of the most entertaining guys on the field. Yes, he has. I mean, the average is up 4.4 from his regular 3.6. 14 plays, 70 yards. He's only scored two touchdowns all year, and he has two touchdowns already in this game in the first Something half. real important, Al. Five and a half minutes and change there on the drive. Northern's offense is keeping the defense off the field. Mm -hmm. Understand now, folks, that we're talking about an offense that is dead last in the MAC with only 197 yards a game on average. Now, last week against Toledo, they got that up over 300. So, again, with Finland, a quarterback, and some of this other stuff starting to fall into place... Maybe we're seeing something. Leandre Moore, again, look out. This guy can burn it. This time, though, he is hammered down. And I'm talking about with some authority by Rocky Newton. So there you go. They're Newton special on special team teams. <laughs> He's having a heck of a day. Rocky Newton, he was the guy that kept that drive alive on that uh, fake pass. Newton just came in there and just flattened them. That's where you show emotion out there. That's that's what's missing a lot of times in the game today, especially in the professional game. But I'd love to see it in the college ranks. You see who had him by the ankles as well, Randall Foster. 
was a quarterback, now a tight end, and scrambling, scrambling, scrambling is Kevin Cartwright, and he gets a little bit more than the line of scrimmage on first down. I'll tell you one thing, the defense is going to need a tackling drill at halftime because they just missed about four or five tackles there. I mean, I know this guy is a pretty good back, but he's not that good to make these many guys miss there. Urzers get blocked there. Here's one guy. Get your feet underneath you there. There's two. Nice tackle there by uh, Harry Amu. Harry Amu. Now, three wide receivers, single setback as Cartwright nearly runs into a block, but he dances off of that. We've got a flag on the play as Cartwright is angled out of bounds across the 30-yard line. <laughs> I don't know if we can uh, get this on uh, replay, but man, oh man, Steve Smith unloaded on someone there. I think it was James Hasty, but wow, did he, <laughs> did he water his eyes on that play? He almost knocked him back into the running back. Flag goes against Ball State. Now watch 77 pull around there. Oh, it's actually 73. Smith does a good job. He, you know, he puts him back, almost makes the play with the lineman, with his own lineman knocking that guy back. There. The guy who was held was Terrell Alexander, who is playing with an elbow injury. And in fact, I mean, it looked like he was blocking for the ball carrier. He was being <laughs> held so badly. So second and 19 for Ball State is Jake Giussetti once again operates out of this shotgun right between his two split backs and just they're, they're going against a stiff wind too so we have to watch this now this is the handoff to Moore. they like to do that and look at that somebody buys it but not everybody does Moore gets to the 20-yard line so about a five-yard gain on the play well this is one of the things the coaches have to take into account the wind i mean the wind is blowing very sharp that flag in the uh end zone is standing at attention there so that's one thing you could take advantage of defensively because it's going to be hard throwing that ball upfield. That ball will hang quite a bit. Jake Giussetti. This is a team, by the way, that will run a little bit of option. option. Giussetti was born in Evanston. He wound up, his family moved to the Milwaukee area. He was a member of a state championship team at Marquette University High. Now he takes it himself, and he gets to the outside. Now, I don't know. Were they trying to run some option there, or was that just a, a play, you know, go ahead and I, roll out and go? I think they just didn't want to um, have any problems back there. Because third down play, I, that's kind of hard to do, to have a quarterback sitting back there that far to come out of there and make a run there. Yeah, just had him sprint out. But there's, once again, our guy Steve Smith. I don't know what he has, but he needs to give it to the rest of that defense to get him fired up as he is. So it's fourth and 12. That was a very strange call from that far. Mike Tinder back to punt from about his eight-yard line. Low snap, hard rush, nearly oh. blocked, and he just does get it away. Not a great punt. It's covered up by Kevin Cartwright. These are the type of games, especially when you have two teams that are struggling, that can be won or lost in the special team area. Under the circumstances, I think he did pretty well to get it away because he had a couple of guys coming hard. Yes, he did. Great pressure on the on the inside there. These are the kind of games, this is where you need the special teams to step up because you need any break you can get. 26-yard punt in Northern Illinois starts in Ball State territory. First and 10 at the 48-yard line. Five minutes and change remaining first half. Huskies with a 14-7 lead. Ivory Bryant, guess who, with the ball. <laughs> You know, one thing I was thinking on your plus, you know, plus territory there, that would have been a nice time for a play action, especially when you have your running back over 100 yards already because you have that defense thinking about him. Give him a three-yard gain. Chris Finland's really given this offense a lot of confidence. You can just tell the last two games just the way they played. Tackle was made again by Wilbur McDonald. Ball State has played a lot of base defense. They have not done a lot of blitzing this afternoon and now off the fake handoff play action freezes defense will Mitchell get it can't quite catch up to it as Finland fires it downfield but that's the thing I was calling for I was I was looking for that I would have been nice to run even on first down but when you're when you're second and seven you know they're more likely to look for a pass Good Mitchell, play action fake. yes indeed and Mitchell Mitchell curled well under the coverage of Raphael Ball Now 
Now watch that. You see the nice play action fake because you have him to bite. A nice roll out against the win with him. Watch his reaction here. He's looking for a flag. I think he thinks that his receiver was held. As it is, third and seven. Huskies, once again, a little bit better than they have been. In fact, a lot better than they have been on third down. Exhibit A, your honor, right there as Mitchell takes the ball and gets to the stick and a little bit more. First down, Northern Illinois at the 34-yard line. Let's remember, too, here, we're talking about a walk-on quarterback who's doing this. Finland, just a three-step drop, a nice quick hitch there to Deion Mitchell. That's the guy they want to get the ball in his hands, and, and uh, Finland is just doing an outstanding job. You're going to forgive me for the understatement. They have been more than a little bit better on third down. Northern Illinois today, 7 of 10. And you have to remember, folks, they were slightly more than 20% on third down. And they've had some long third down conversions, too. Ivory Bryant, the ball carrier. One of the things that Northern did think, it's interesting because Ball State, at 113 yards a game, came in third in the Mackin rushing defense, 28th nationally. But Northern's coaches thought that they could run the football on the Cardinals. Well, that ranking's going to change, obviously, after today. And using a little play action like we have seen to open up the passing game, and that has worked. Once again, Finland looking downfield for Mitchell, and he was double-covered. Carl Moore actually got a hand on it for Ball State in the end zone. Yeah, Moore looks like he's a little roughed up there, but they did a good job back there. They also had uh, Keon Laws back there on double coverage. He's got to read that, but he's a young quarterback. He's doing a, a, a fine, fine job there, but he didn't see that he was in double coverage. I guess he thought he could make that throw. Actually, nearly did. I mean, he had the needle threaded. The ball was a little high. I, again, he, hey, listen, second guessing is great. I don't know if I'd have put that ball down there, but what the heck, give him credit. Now, here's Ivory Bryant, who on third down has got what he needs and a shade more first down Northern Illinois. <laughs> Man, is he run Ivory Ivory is running with a lot of authority. I mean, he is really taking it to him. He has those shoulders down low, and I mean, he's hitting it up there. You can just tell. He's like, give me the ball. Tackled by Troy Ramey, the free safety, and Ernest Presley, the outside linebacker. I mean, the inside of that line, Wise and Murrow and Cockrum, they're just doing a great job, just blowing holes right through that ball state line. Once again, single setback. That's Bryant. Receivers right and left. McCarrens and Mitchell and Bryant slips and there's a flag on the play is there was some contact Bobby Reed the tight end and it looked like he got into it with the defensive end Wilbur McDonald we'll see and you see a play like that will be holding on yeah the, probably on the tight end Bobby Reed you that's, got it that's tough for tight ends a lot of times because you're, you're trying to wall a guy off to seal him there and sometimes that hand gets out there and gets exposed, and your natural tendency is to grab. On the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, still first down. Bobby Reed was the guy. Pat Holleran is our referee this afternoon in DeKalb. See, he's trying to seal, seal his man off there. He got his hands probably on the inside and locked on him a little bit. But the official was standing right there on the sideline. I mean, it was right in his face. Yeah, you got to be a little slick by that. If you grab, you know, let go real quick. <laughs> you got to come back again. Don't, don't sustain that hold or they'll catch you. Bobby Reed out of Richards High School. Bobby Reed's a big fella, 6'2", 254. He's done, a, he's done a fine job today sealing guys off. They've been able to run pretty well. Tight ends are... Uh, a great part of the running game, and uh, I'm sure he's going to make some fine blocks for this game's over. We've talked a lot about the youth. Northern Illinois on offense today, starting six freshmen and one sophomore on the two deep. Out of the 22 guys on the two deep, 16 of them are freshmen or sophomores. Fully two-thirds of this team is either freshman or sophomore. There are only eight seniors on Joe Novak's roster. Joe Novak talked about that with his team. He said at the beginning of the year, the seniors didn't realize that they had to take more of a leadership role. And uh, got somebody hurt there. That was Troy Ramey. And again, we mentioned earlier that he had the problem last week against Central Michigan with the Stingers. And that indeed looks like exactly. the same problem. See the way he's holding yep. that arm? He's holding that arm. That's, that's not a good sign for them. No, because 
Ramey is one of their interception leaders. He's got two. First down and 21 yards to go and play action. Finland rolls right. He pulls it down and he goes. And you know something? At six foot two and 198, I mean, he's got a little bit of frame that he can just go ahead and take that football. Now, it, he, he spends a year in the weight room. He won't be 198 for very long, yeah, exactly. but he'll still be six foot two and a pretty good runner. You see, now he's making some smart decisions there. He's not going to get a turnover. He's looking around. No one's open. He sees uh, uh, Mitchell out there, but he doesn't want to make a turnover. He knows they're in plus territory. They have the wind behind them, so he wants to make sure they at least can get a field goal out of this. So he gets it back to second and ten from the Ball State 22. And to Bryant, the belly play goes left side. Bryant still on his feet, staggers another couple of yards, and then he is brought down. Although they had, although Ball State had good penetration, Bryant has very quick feet and did a nice job of keeping his balance. A powerful runner, not a fast runner, but a powerful quick runner. He's a good north-south runner, and he doesn't, you know, freshmen sometimes, younger players will dance side to side. He doesn't dance much. And once again, we talked about third down, and there's the that. update, 8 of 11. You're talking about a team that 20% from before, 8 out of 11, that's outstanding. Two receivers far side, one to the near, and Chris Finland calls timeout with a minute and 41 seconds remaining in the first half, Northern Illinois with the 14 to 7 lead. With Al Harris, I'm Brian Davis. And Al, let's give a little bit more. You've been good about this. Former lineman, you respect these big guys in the trench. Let's talk a little bit more about the protection and the blocking that the offensive line has done for the Huskies. They've been awesome. You know, one of the problems they had earlier, they started the season with a young guy out of Morgan Park High School named Frisman Jackson, another walk-on true freshman at quarterback. Uh, Jackson really uh, was punished and one of the problems was that the line was not getting the job done particularly well well all of a sudden the line has started to pick it up and you know today they are missing one their best run blocker Kent Booth senior left guard is out of this lineup but in the last two weeks the quarterback for Northern Illinois has only been sacked one time and he's, he's making very good decisions, you know, when you look at it from the quarterback situation. But Jamie McDonald, their senior 6'4", 323, uh, number 62, has done a fine job for them. I think he's taking that leadership role to another level. You have Bill Wise and uh, Greg Merrow in there, uh, Matt Cockrum. Those guys are doing a good job. Uh, there's one way to stay warm. Yep. I've had to do that quite a bit being in old Chicago area. Deion Mitchell's in the slot receivers right and left. Single setback is Ivory, Finland. And Ball State may have jumped. Flags are down. The ball quickly to Mitchell, and he's shoved out of bounds. Very but let's see what the penalty call is as he's shoved out by Nate Andrews. Very smart play. What coaches do a lot of times, they scout each other. Just a, just a quick hitch there. But what coaches do a lot of times, they scout each other, and they do a lot of blitzing you know, to try to get them out of field goal range. So they, they give them a quick hard count draw the penalty. Ball State has been playing base defense. Penalty is declined, so first down Northern Illinois at the 11-yard line of Ball State with a shade more than a minute and a half remaining. 137 left second quarter. Ball State has been playing base. That time it looked like they were going to send a guy to blitz off the edge and they got burned for it because he jumped inside the neutral zone. Exactly. Here's Bryant. Good hole up the middle now. He is roped down, and he, boy, the ball goes down, and Ball State recovers. Ivory Bryant was tackled. The ball popped out of his hands, rolled forward, and inside the five-yard line, the ball goes over to the Cardinals. I, I'm not going to lie to you here. I was just thinking about this. The last game they played, they had the same problem. They got down to about the five or six-yard line, and they fumbled the football. Nice job there, but I think it was... Uh, Phelps was Phelps the guy there. who tackled him. Sure. He got stripped, and then Jared O'Risky. See, they need to play like that. Phelps gets around there. You've got to protect the ball. Ernest Presley also put a nice hit on him. That's the fourth fumble that Ivory has lost this season. Jared O'Risky, we believe, was the guy who came up with the fumble for Ball State. We'll double-check that. The bottom line is that the drive stops cold for Northern Illinois. First and 10 from the three-yard line, and the Cardinals conservatively run it out. 
And see, that's the bad thing. You feel bad for Ivory Bryant because he's the guy that's been carrying him in this game, obviously, um, him along with Chris Finland. But uh, you got to protect the football down there. That's what's, that's what's caused them to lose some games. So that, that was a big, huge play. I mean, you're talking about, uh, you know, at least a seven, I mean, a three-point, possibly seven-point turnaround here. A week ago at Toledo, Northern Illinois fumbled the ball away at the Toledo 5 and the Toledo 7. They also, off of turnovers, had two touchdowns scored on them in 23 seconds time. Those are the kind of things that when you are young and you are struggling can absolutely kill you. You have to be thinking that. Now, you have to be thinking ball protection first if you're running back. You have to think about that. Uh, the quarterback was aware of it. Maybe Brian got a little tired. Joe Novak. He's with a couple upset. of he's upset yeah I, I was gonna say a couple of words over the shoulder to an assistant or perhaps to one of the guys up here in the press box but he looks none too pleased at that turn of events now Cartwright gets the ball finds a seam he's out across well he's to about the 15 yard line that's going to be the final play of the first half here in DeKalb Ball State's very fortunate to escape uh, here all right, make a liar out of me. They've stopped the clock. I don't know why Ball State would stop it. Oh, to move the chains. I was going to say, I don't know why Ball State would stop it. Now, make a truth teller out of me. <laughs> now, nah, they'll just let that run out. And indeed, they do. They escaped the bullet. They dodged a big bullet. But you know something? All things considered, okay, take away the late fumble. Northern Illinois has played arguably its best half of football all season long. This is a team that, among other things, took Vanderbilt close a couple of weeks ago. But this time, Northern Illinois has got the lead. Huskies 14, Cardinals 7. Back with our halftime entertainment information after a break on Sports Channel. Remodel your home with brand name savings at Menard. Tells your bath products are a great place to start. Choose from a wide selection of toilets in many styles and colors. The Savoy is $59. Add a new look to walls with top quality paneling by ABT Co. Choose from many beautiful styles. These decorators are just $13.84. These tile boards, $17.92. Shop Menards for selection and savings. Save big money at Menards. What makes Mike Masalo's Joyce Superstore an automotive superstore? How do they do it? It's simply. So when you're looking for it all, you can be sure. There would be a lot less violence in hockey if they adopted the death penalty. One-on-one -on -one sports. Sports talk 24 hours a day. You are watching Sports Channel. Mid-American Conference, I think, is great for Northern Illinois University. I've played in it. I've coached in it at other schools. I've got a lot of respect for the Mid-American Conference. Fans can come to the games, and our fans can get to the games, and we're thrilled to get back in the league and have a chance to fight for a conference championship again. It's back-to-back -back Mac action when Northern takes on Ohio University on November 1st. Then, on November 8th, Eastern Michigan enters the doghouse for the home season finale. NIU football is back in the Mac. See you this fall. Welcome back to Husky Stadium in DeKalb. Brian Davis and Al Harris watching Northern Illinois bid for its first victory of the season against the defending MAC champion Ball State. And Al, the Huskies showing a lot of moxie, but again, Ball State showing the stuff that got it uh, a MAC championship a season ago. Yes, they did. I mean, they dodged the bullet right there, right before halftime, and uh, you know they stripped. Uh, Ivory Bryant there, and they've, they've kept themselves in the game right now. Northern Illinois did a great job right from the very beginning, and again, uh, as we were wrapping up our other broadcast of the Pittsburgh Rutgers game, Northern Illinois got into the house. Uh, they converted two or three on first down, and Ivory Bryant got himself a good score. 
and uh, that set the tone for what I said earlier, and I'll say again, it's been a very entertaining afternoon. Yes, it has. Ivory Bryant has, you know, he's definitely taken over this football game. I mean, he's, he's very excited. He has his feet moving very well. His shoulders are low, and they're doing great blocking on that offensive line. Let's take a look, first of all, at Northern Illinois' first scoring drive. 11 plays, 87 yards, but again, it was quick. An 18-yard gain, 17-yard gain, and then Ivory Bryant, 22 yards. He got a great hole up the middle, so the drive only took 245. And let's not forget that uh, young, improving offensive line there for uh, uh, NIU. Bill Wise, Greg Merrow, Matt Cockrum, uh, Jamie McDonald. You know, all those guys up there are blocking very well. You can't get those yards by yourself. Northern Illinois actually stopped Ball State, but the Cardinals rebounded after an earlier fumble. Ball State comes back eight plays, 66 yards. Again, a quick one. Terrell with the two-yard touchdown run. Northern Illinois, a long drive, 14 plays, 70 yards, five and a half minutes. Ivory Bryant, second touchdown of the afternoon. But they were also led by Chris Finland's excellent decision-making, nice throwing there, and they also had a fake punt, which helped them immensely. So Northern Illinois, with the 14-7 lead, it could have been more, but for the late fumble in the second quarter. When we come back, we're going to take a look at some things that are happening around campus here athletically at Northern Illinois with Al Harris. I'm Brian Davis. Glad to have you along on Sports Channel. My love must be a kind of blind love. I can't see anyone but you. Generation Next. Hi, I'm Tom Peck Jr. from Tom Peck Ford in Hampshire, Illinois. Stop and visit my brother Bob and I. We have all the services of big city dealerships with none of the pressure. All Ford dealers pay the same for their cars and trucks, so doesn't it make sense to deal with a small, family-owned dealership? Check out our remaining 96s and our 97s that are arriving daily, and don't forget about our free service loaners. We're at Tom Peck Ford, just 20 minutes east of Belvedere on Route 72 in Hampshire, Illinois. Tom Waddle is a very busy guy these days. As host of Bull Sox Underground, Tom has a direct line to the Bulls and Sox, Chicago's two most storied franchises. Other TV shows say they can show you the stuff that goes on behind the scenes in professional sports. Tom Waddle can show you the stuff behind that. And you can only see it on Sports Channel. Go Underground tomorrow night on Bull Sox Underground, the show behind the show. Underground. underground. We're in this thing to win. Hey, that's the way to unload on him now. Keep hitting him. Let's get a drive going and score some damn points. Jailbreak, jailbreak. Watch the damn ball. Hey, we came too far. Let's go. I'm Hub Arthur. Join Tom Waddle, Dan Hampton, and me for Pro Football Weekly every Friday night at 1030 on Sports Channel. mentioned that Ball State is the defending Mid-American Conference champion. 1983, Northern Illinois won the MAC, then went away. Now Northern has returned to its roots. This is the first year of NIU's return to the Mid-American Conference. And you know, Northern may be the new kid on the block in the MAC, but the Huskies have not wasted any time making their presence felt. Brad Hoy gives us an inside look at this new era in NIU athletics on this edition of Husky Tracks. Northern Illinois may be one of the Mid-American Conference's newcomers this year, but the league is certainly no stranger to the Huskies. Northern was first a member of the MAC from 1975 to 1986, winning league titles in several sports during that period. The first NIU team to wear a MAC crown was the 1976 men's golf squad. They, along with four other individuals, were honored two weekends ago as the newest inductees to the NIU Athletic Hall of Fame. Also honored were former women's basketball star Lisa Foss, track standout Joel Cochran, gymnast Pete Botoff, and former gymnastics coach Hubie Dunn. 
university in general has just uh, made tremendous uh, strides upward. Uh, that, uh, that was one reason why I came here. I thought this was a uh, university is about ready to blossom. I was willing to be a part of that and hoped I could contribute to it. From Husky past to Husky present, and the latest NIU team to wear a matte crown is women's soccer. Coach Frank Horvath's squad posted a 6-1 record against conference foes to capture the league's regular season title. The Huskies boast two of the nation's top scorers in senior Allison Wade of St. Charles and junior Ann Mucci. Wade set a school record this season with 15 goals so far, while Naperville's Mucci is already Northern's all-time points leader. NIU will host the MAC's first ever women's soccer conference tournament on November 7th and 9th at the Husky Soccer Complex. Another Husky team vying for a league title is volleyball. Northern would get off to one of its best starts ever this fall, winning 12 of its first 13 matches, two of those victories coming against Big Ten foes Northwestern and Minnesota. Senior Becky Stewart is having an MVP season for the Huskies. She's already twice this fall been named MAC Player of the Week. Last year, head coach Pete Waite's team qualified for the NCAA tournament by virtue of winning the Midwestern Collegiate Conference title. For the Huskies to return to the NCAAs this season, they'll have to capture a league crown in a fourth different conference. Not only are the Husky Spikers getting it done on the court, they're also excelling in the classroom. Recently, the team received recognition from the American Volleyball Coaches Association for having the fourth highest overall grade point average in all of Division I volleyball. But the volleyball players aren't the only NIU team that's making the grade. With five student athletes earning academic All-America status, Northern's women's golf team is the top academic collegiate golf squad in the nation. But they're still not the top academic team at Northern. That distinction belongs to Laura Scott's women's tennis squad, who boasts a team grade point average of 3.50 on a four-point scale. And speaking of tennis, two of the sport's most beloved and respected players were honored by their alma mater this past spring. After brilliant collegiate careers at Northern Illinois, twin brothers Tim and Tom Gullickson went on to become two of the top tennis professionals in the world. However, they perhaps gained even greater distinction as tennis coaches. Tom as U.S. Davis Cup team captain and 1996 Olympic team coach, and Tim as mentor to such tennis luminaries as Martina Navratilova and Pete Sampras. Tim's untimely passing from brain cancer in the spring of 1996 was mourned worldwide, but his and Tom's legacy lives on at Northern through a distinguished alumni award bearing their name. There's a lot of outstanding athletes that have come out of Northern and have made uh, a pretty good impression in, in professional sports. So, um, you know, we're very honored. We're certainly excited that we can help Northern hopefully raise this money to endow these scholarships for hopefully two other, uh, one male, one female player to, to realize their potential and get a, a, same, a good education at the same time. Additional fundraising efforts are currently underway for the proposed Gullickson Tennis Center, which would be built adjacent to Husky Stadium as a part of Northern's West Campus renovation project. For more information on Husky athletics, check out NIU on the web at www.niu.edu slash athletics. That's it for this edition of Husky Tracks. Save big on home security at Menard. Brighten those long winter nights with Heath Zenith motion detectors. They light up to welcome visitors or scare off intruders. Just $8.49 after rebate. Get a brighter, more efficient light with outdoor bulbs from Angelo. Choose from 45 or 90 watt halogen floods on sale for $3.79. For the best selection of lights, shop Menard. Save big money at Menard. Mitch Richmond is one of the league's top guards, but the Kings will have to work hard to ascend the throne of the world champs in the final preseason tune-up. Bulls, Kings, coverage begins tonight at 7 on Sports Channel. What makes Mike Fasalo's Joyce Superstore an automotive superstore? How do they do it? It's simply. So when you're looking for it all, you can be sure. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, 
troublemakers. The round pegs in the square holes. The ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules, and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them. Because they change things. They push the human race forward. And while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Don't you love football weather at the end of October in the Midwest? Let's spend a few minutes with the head coach here at Northern Illinois, Joe Novak, who, Joe, I know that this is not the best of times for you, but the fact of the matter is that when you came here, you had an idea of what it would take. This is probably about as bad as it's going to get, or at least I'm sure you hope so. Well, I don't think there's any question about that, Brian. we got a nice young group of kids here. We really do, and I can see us making progress. We're just not in a position yet to win a football game, and hopefully that'll happen today. But I've been pleased with the way our kids have progressed. I looked at our roster last night, and I know that 95% of this football team is going to be back next year, and almost the majority of it for two or three more years. So we've got to look down the road a little bit and be patient with what we're doing. I think that's a point worth bearing out. I mean, the fact of the matter is the Huskies only have 10 seniors on the football team, so you really do go ahead, you throw the kids in there, you let them get at it. Right. Our motto was come in, and those freshman kids, if they're good enough, we're going to play them, and they were. That's the best we got in our program, and we didn't push any of these seniors out. We've given them a chance to play, certainly, and we're playing these young kids. They're doing a good job, and Hopefully this experience that they're gaining is going to help us here down the road. If you could look in your crystal ball, where do you hope to be, say, a year from now as you go through this reconstruction process? Well, we've got a bunch of kids, uh, a bunch of freshman red shirts that we're holding out too, Brian. So we're going to get, I think, a real good infusion next year, some kids that can help improve us. Uh, certainly I'd like to be in a position where we're going to be competitive in every game we play next year, in, uh, especially in this league, and I think that's a direct possibility. Whether we're ready or not to win the conference championship next year, I can't say that. But if we can get ourselves in a position where we're playing the win every week that'll take care of itself but i think in two years i really feel that we're going to be in a position where we can win this thing coming into the mid-american conference has not been the easiest quite frankly it really raised the bar on you in the end is this a case of what doesn't kill you will make you stronger well i sure hope so i think that's i don't think there's any doubt about that we played uh, besides our conference three non-conference tough football teams and i think it's made us better but people can't underestimate this league it's a great football league you know you look at four teams right now that are ranked in the top 40 in the country and deservedly so in miami marshall Toledo and Ohio U. Toledo beat uh, Purdue, who's on top of the Big Ten standings right now. It's a good football league. It's a good league for us, but we've got to raise our level of play up a little bit. It remains to be seen what, in the long run, you're going to do at quarterback. You're going with Finland. Here's a guy who walked on. You had another walk-on earlier, Frisman Jackson, who you started the season with. Those guys didn't get the one scholarship you awarded. You've got five freshman quarterback. That is a, that's a question over, over the long haul. That's going to take some time to answer. Well, there's no question. You know, Finland stepped in last week and played well. I was very pleased with him. Before that, Frisman showed some real good potential. He just went in a little bit of a slump, and it wasn't all his fault. Part of it was, was our inability to pass protect very well. And like you said, our scholarship kid were redshirt, and Rob Harding from Florida. So it's going to be interesting the rest of this year. It's going to be an interesting spring practice, too. When you look at the guys that you're playing now, who are the guys who are the difference makers? Are the guys that, over again, using the long haul thing, over the long haul, will turn out to be the difference makers? I think any of our quarterbacks could be, Brian. I really do. I like all three of those kids. And like I said, it's going to be interesting to see how they sort themselves out. But I think they're all very talented kids. I like our tailbacks. We've got two right now in Ivory Bryant and Gary Pryor that I think are both very, very talented. Uh, Pryor's got to get, uh, mature up a little bit more. Bryant's the most of the playing. But I think they're kids that are difference makers. And like I said, we've got six or seven kids that are being redshirted that we think are pretty darn good, too. Bottom line, is this a program that needs really one more recruiting class to really get you on the way? Yeah, I don't think there's any question. You know, last year, honestly, I think think we had a really good recruiting group. We can keep those kids here and do a good job with them, coaching them, and get another one this year, which we plan on doing. We've got started on that already, and if we have another good year, it's going to put us exactly where we need to be. Joe, thanks so much. Good luck the rest okay. of the way. Thank you, Brent. Joe Novak, the head football coach here at Northern Illinois. I'm Brian Davis. Stand by for more. We come back. Al Harris and I will have highlights and stats from the first half on Sports Channel. 
this new Fox Sports Chicago is an outrage. They claim home teams, Fox attitude. Do they not have enough attitude for Fox? Arthur, can Verushka look a home team? Sure, they have White Sox, Bulls and Blackhawks, but where is Iceland? Phyllis, they probably give that time to Fox Sports News. They shall not stand. <laughs> Coming soon, Sports Channel becomes Fox Sports Chicago. Nice check. Adams. From the Discovery Channel comes a story you will never forget. In a six-year adventure, they set out to understand them. Then became part of the family. Now, they have to say goodbye. Premier television event, Wolves at Our Door. Premiering Monday at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, only on the Discovery Channel. After $1,500 cash back, a 98 Dodge Neon is priced considerably less than Honda Civic, Toyota Corolla, and Saturn. So draw your own conclusions at the friendly Dodge dealer near you. How do you make a new... Dodge Neon go even faster? Offer $1,500 cash back or 1.9 financing for up to 60 months that can save you over $2,700. So before this offer ends, step on it to the friendly Dodge dealer near you. We began as a castle on a hill, educating teachers to teach others. A century later, education remains our business. 22,000 students, six undergraduate colleges, a law school, and over 900 outstanding faculty today make Northern one of the nation's leading comprehensive universities. We've grown over the years, but our job remains the same, to teach, to explore, to inspire. Northern Illinois University, honoring our heritage by building futures. Welcome back to the Doghouse, Northern Illinois, with a 14-7 lead at the half over Ball State. And let's take a look at some of the first-half highlights as the Huskies bid for their first victory of the season. Good drive early in the football game to put Northern Illinois on the board. Yes, they opened it up with a lot of passing to open it up for this run right here by Ivory Bryant. 22-yard touchdown. Off to a great start for Ivory today. Bryant with 129 yards rushing. He has had a 138-yard day. Now... All State says, we come right back at you. They come right back with James Terrell. Short touchdown run. So Terrell evens things up for the Cardinals, but then Northern going to the house again, and they did it with a little bit of trickery. They're not holding anything back. Nice pass from Kent Baker to Rocky Newton. 30-yard gain keeps the drive alive. So Baker sets it up, and Finland's handoff to Brian finishes it. Finishes. The offensive lineup's taken over. You can see them excited there. They've got good momentum established. So here are your halftime stats. Look at the rushing yardage for Northern Illinois. This is a team that averaged 110 yards a game coming in. 155 on 32 carries compared to 111 for Ball State. Passing yardage, you see the way it adds up. 283 yards of total offense for Northern Illinois compared to 145 for Ball State. Out time of possession. Time of possession is very crucial. 17 uh, to 12 there. If you look back at that total yards, their total yards per game is only 197 yards, so they're way ahead of that production. And a lot of that is credited to Chris Finland, the quarterback, who's really controlled that team, and as well as Ivory Bryant with that fine rushing. Game. We'll take a look at some of the individual stats in just a couple of minutes, but the second half is about to begin in DeKalb. Jerry and his friends sure love the big picture and sound on Zenith 60 inch TV. We got the two big centers ready to jump. In fact, they love it so much, they're actually considering getting one of their own. Zenith. Big enough to share. But who wants to? 20 bucks a swan gets up. You're on. Announcing a sale so big, it's scary. It's the North of Rubber Automall's Monster Sale, where you'll find a giant selection of over 1,500 vehicles in stock, all at spectacular prices. So, so why torture yourself shopping all over for a car? You'll find it all during the Monster Sale at the North Aurora Auto Mall.
you doing, everybody? We had a great position at Joey Catholic. The pride, the unity, a lot of heart. The student section was just few one. State championship my junior year, went to the semifinals my senior year. It was a great feeling, and pulling off the state championship was a, it was a dream come true. The IHSA state football championships are coming Thanksgiving weekend on Sports Channel. Ivory Bryant has been the man for the Huskies so far this afternoon. 28 carries, 129 yards, and he's got both of those that you see figuring in in that bottom line on your screen, 14 to 7. Northern Linding Ball State and the Huskies will begin the second half with the football. Notably for the Cardinals rushing, Kevin Cartwright, 7 carries, 48 yards. James Terrell, 8 for 38 and a touchdown. Leandre Moore, their main man, 7 carries, 31 yards, and so the Huskies have had some success with him. Passing, Jake Giussetti, only two of four for Ball State, 34 yards. Chris Finland, six of 12 for 98 yards. But the big pass, Kent Baker's 30-yard completion to Rocky Newton on the fake punt, and we are underway. McCarran's from just shy of his five-yard line, and off the reverse, he's going up the right side. He's still got the football, and he gets a great gain out of that as off the fake reverse, Northern Illinois starts the second half. Well, let's see. There's a flag on the play. You have to love Joe Novak right here. He's just letting it all hang out. He's saying, hey, you know what? We're going all out for it, fellas. Holding against Northern Illinois. Okay, some of that then will come back. But a lot of the Cardinal like special teamers bit on the fake with Dewan Hawthorne. I like that. You know, here you go, a nice fake there. And this is the guy McCarran's we talked about to see the ball get in his hand a little more. But uh, that holding penalty brings it back. But I like it that they're aggressive. They're not sitting back. They're not waiting for someone to give them the game. They're going to take it. First and 10, Northern Illinois was looking at possession at midfield. They are at their own 29-yard line. The handoff to Ivory Bryant. They get going with him right away here in the second half, up the gut. And he's taken down by Howard Sims, the middle linebacker. Sims is obviously their big play guy. This is going to be a big key. When you're coming out in the third quarter, this the beginning and the ending of the big beginning of the game and the beginning of the third quarter usually establishes what team is going to take control in the second half. Gain of five. So Bryant four yards away from his season and career best. Out of the eye, the Huskies operate. And off play action, he's under pressure, but Finland gets the ball off to Randall Foster. Again, the quarterback converted to tight end. He is roped down. QB to QB there. By Nate Andrews. QB to QB. They're just doing a fine job of keeping Ball State off balance with good play action. When you get that running game established, you can run a lot of things. That's why so many coaches, they say you win with the running game. Look at that, under pressure, throwing across his body, and they are close to the first down, third and one at the Northern 39. And the toss to Bryant, looking good. Oh, does he get around the corner? He breaks three to the 40, 35, finally shoved out of bounds at the 30-yard line by Keon Laws. Credit Laws with a touchdown-saving tackle as Ivory Bryant had the big eyes for the end zone. What a play for Northern Illinois and Bryant individually. Ivory Bryant there takes a quick pitch there. He's there. He looks like he has Ivory so far. No one can hold on to him. He breaks out into the open field. Nice tackle by uh, Laws. Otherwise, it's a touchdown. 31 Great yards. Blocking there also by Lou uh, Sponzel. Nice block. You can't stop him. You can only hope to contain this guy, Bryant. Today. First and 10 at the 31. After, again, a 31-yard play for Bryant. Takes a look as he tries to go to the right side. This time, Ball State not buying. Short gain, Jeff Phelps. Four-year starter at outside linebacker out of Crete Moni High School. Now, you, as you can see here, this time Ball State strikes back. Good pressure there by Phelps. He just got off the block, wrapped him up. That's what you got to do against a good back like Bryant. 
But Bryant smells it, though. He wants that ball. I bet he wants it 30 to 40 times in this game. Gain of one. Ivory Bryant now sitting on his career high. Ooh. Whoa, look at that. Ooh. Pile up in the middle. Now, I mean, there was, you could hear the clash of the pads up here. I think that was Matt and Masaros, number 51, that <laughs> kind of lit him up there. See Matt right there in the middle, number 51. He gets, oh, actually, I think it was him that got a shot on it. We didn't get quite the right angle on that one, but uh, I think it was Masaros, 51, that got a nice initial hit on him. He didn't wrap him up. But uh, Howard Sims once again makes that play there. Big play here, third down. Third and nine. Back to pass. Some pressure now. Finland's going to pull it down. He's going to try to go. He's not going to make the first down. Had a moment's worth of daylight, but the Cardinals' defense closed that well and quickly. They did, but I like this kid. This kid makes smart decisions. You don't see him doing much to hurt his team. If he doesn't see it there, he knows he's in plus territory. He's not going to make the big mistake. Keon Laws and Wilbur McDonald were the guys that eventually got to him. He had quick pressure there. But see, he's not going to make that mistake. If he doesn't see someone open, he's going to try to get his field goal people in position to make a field goal. So a field goal, this would be a 42-yarder for Brian Clark, and it's low. He slipped. Yep. And so that attempt, no good. Brian Clark with a... A good string on points after. He's got 33 consecutive, but remember it rained a lot here at times this afternoon, and he just loses yeah. his footing. He lost that plant foot there, his left foot. He was trying to plant and just lost it. That happens sometimes with field goal kickers, but they also have to be aware of that footing. We're going to take a timeout. 14 to 7, Northern Illinois at Husky Stadium in DeKalb. Pepsi theft. It can happen anywhere, anytime. Fight back! Introducing the Pepsi Club. Now Pepsi moments don't have to become anxious moments. Excuse me. What you were about to see did not actually happen, <laughs> but it could happen. They took everything! Look, Ma, the Pepsi Club works. Not today. Thank you, Pepsi Club. Pepsi. Generation next. Available in six packs. Who can offer you a three-day exchange policy on any used car they sell? Fox Valley Ford in Aurora, home of the used car 100% satisfaction guarantee. See Fox Valley Ford in the North Aurora Auto Mall, Orchard Road, and I-88. College Football Saturday continues on Sports Channel. Delon Washington is among the many weapons in the Trojans' arsenal. Oregon storms the Coliseum for a Pac-10 war with USC. Tonight at 9.30 on Sports Channel. We have mentioned Northern Illinois' offensive line. Here's the coach who handles them, Dan Rauscher, who back in 1983, we mentioned the MAC championship. He was actually a student assistant for Bill Mallory, two of whose sons are coaching in this game today. Tell you about that after we get the Ball State drive going. And once again, out of the shotgun, the fake to Moore and the pass and a good completion. This is a dangerous ball and still going on the sidelines that is Mike Pickett, the fullback who hardly ever touches the football for Ball State. Pickett with just one reception for one yard until now. Pickett only 10 carries for 18 yards. Goodness gracious, 39 yards. First, they fake the handoff to Leandre Moore and then dump the ball off to Mike Pickett. And those are the guys, the guys that never touch the ball. And in, in, in Ball State's offense, the fullback and the tight end hardly ever touch the ball. But when they do, look out. Play action. Just setting. Back to pass, and the ball is dropped. Otherwise, Jimmy Place was looking at some major league real estate. Well, you called that. You said that a tight end and a fullback hardly touch the ball. And who do they go to the first two times? The fullback and the tight end. Jimmy Place has caught three balls for a whopping seven yards, but one of those has gone for a touchdown. Now, you watch that play action once again. They had established a run. Three running backs with over 30-plus yards. The guy was wide open. Just said he just didn't make the pass. He's not a very accurate thrower. Second and 10 from the 37. Their other tight end, the starter, Brian Vandelli, out of Marion Central Catholic High School, last year caught one ball. It was for a touchdown. Here's James Terrell turning the left corner. He's forced out of bounds. See there, so right now what they're doing, they're sealing guys on the edge, Ball State is of, of, of the Huskies. They're sealing those guys on the outside. 
Donovan Carter was the guy who forced Watch to rail nice out of pull bounds. there. C.C. Smith almost makes the play, but they got to get more guys out on the outside to help them out. Northern hustling in some substitutions real late. Here's Terrell, four and a half yards a pop, a yard better than his season average. In the shotgun, Giussetti takes a look, looking right, has time, now goes left, and he's got a ton of room. He's going to get the first down before he is. Oh, wow, look at that. Buster Sampson really load him the thing you have to watch with uh, Giuseppe is an inexperienced quarterback and guys can get open sometimes now watch this job here by Adrian Reese he's wide wide open hands open he doesn't see him he's looking to run the football we talked before about Giuseppe's preference for the deep ball but today Al true or false he can't do it because of the swirling winds here at Husky Stadium he can't normally, but right now, too, if you see it, they have a little bit of wind behind them, so he should have thrown the ball. He just didn't really look at all. Another play action, and he's looking deep once again, and this time, nice breakup. Patrick Steven knocks the ball down. For a moment, it looked like Reese was open again on that play. Play action holds the rush. He's getting plenty of protection. There's Reese down there, but he doesn't see him. Intended receiver was Montez Curran, who backs up Adrian Reese. And mm -hmm. on that side, when Curran is spelling Reese, either way, there's Patrick Steven. Yep. They have a lot of deep threat. Now, two receivers to the far side, one to the near side, and out of the shotgun. Well, Jake Giussetti decides to call time. We'll take the break with Northern Illinois leading Ball State 14 to 7, 10 and a half minutes remaining, third quarter. If all the golf courses were planted with wheat, world hunger would be wiped out. One on one sports. Sports talk 24 hours a day. What makes Mike Fasalo's Joyce Superstore an automotive superstore? How do they do it? It's simply. So when you're looking for it all, you can be sure. You are watching Sports Channel. We began as a castle on a hill, educating teachers to teach others. A century later, education remains our business. 22,000 students, six undergraduate colleges, a law school, and over 900 outstanding faculty today make Northern one of the nation's leading comprehensive universities. We've grown over the years, but our job remains the same. To teach, to explore, to inspire. Northern Illinois University, honoring our heritage by building futures. Well, as you see here, Patrick Stevens, or Stephen, actually. Or Stephen. Or Stephen. Makes a nice play here. He's an academic All-American. Well, see, Al, that's what you'd expect. Very heady play. He obviously studies a lot of tape, okay? And so he knew where he needed to be <laughs> to break on the football. He closed well. It's just a very smart play by Northern's first ever first-team academic All-American. Giussetti once again. Now he's got some time, but now the pressure closes. Orlando Bowen makes the first hit, and he's going to be finished off by Lewis Miskowitz, the freshman nose tackle for from Marion Central Catholic, second sack of the afternoon for Northern Illinois, and a big one. Now what's just said here, he hardly, he looks upfield just for a split second, he's thinking of running already. I mean, he's not looking upfield, keeping himself active. I mean, he's a big guy, it's hard to get down. And see, he was, not, Larry Davis was covered well yeah, by Stephen again. Well. But so, he's, he, he still kind of looked down a little bit too quick, I thought. I felt you got to keep yourself active. His guys can get looser. So third and 16, and now Giussetti drops a pass. Bowen with the pressure again. He steps up, and he'll run. Giussetti looking downfield. He completes the pass, and he has got himself a first and perhaps goal at the 10-yard line. See, that's what I was talking about right there is, is keeping yourself Looking downfield, even though you're scrambling around, don't duck your head and run automatically. He stepped up past three northern pursuers to make that completion to Adrian Reese's, I believe, the guy who pulled the football down. And Somebody's now is down. that Reese 
No, actually, Larry Davis. Larry Davis was the guy. 20, you know, oh, with my aging right there, eyes, though. 20 for Reese and 29 for Davis. You'll have to excuse me. That's Buster Sampson, the sophomore cornerback out of Fort Meade, Florida, who I was out here at practice the other day, and Sampson a couple of times made a bid to separate men from their consciousnesses. You know what I'm saying? Is yeah. that a word, consciousness? Yeah, consciousness. Thank you. Yeah, he did, but he looks like he got separated from his on this particular play. Yes, indeed. I think he was the guy that came in towards, you know, towards the end and finished off uh, Davis here. As we watch, we watch coming from our right side. Unless that's him from the left. That's Davis. Oh, that's Davis from the left. Yeah. Somebody comes in here right at the end and finishes him off, but that's not Davis. No, that's I, not he Davis. He looks like he might have got a stinger. Yeah, that's probably it. Larry Davis is a sophomore who we talk about Northern's rising stars as Sampson is helped off the field by Phil Voorhees, the Northern trainer on the right of your screen and also one of his assistants. Larry Davis is one of the rising stars on Ball State side. This guy is a sophomore. His per reception average is 25 yards, 24.8 yards. First and goal at the 10-yard line. The ball is right at the 10 for Ball State. Here's where Ball State is dangerous. Once again, they usually convert this into points inside the red zone. Once again, their numbers inside the red zone coming in today. 18 trips, 9 touchdowns. Hand off this to Leandre Moore, and he spins his way down to the 2. Now, Leandre Moore did a great job of protecting the football, even when he was spinning. What I saw, it seemed like he had both hands on that football. He knew he can't lose it down there. He's, he lost the ball down there earlier in the game. Now, watch the line get off the football here. They're going to get nice movement right off the middle of that football there. John Kate does a nice job, blows a hole right in between there, neutralizes uh, the Koswitz, I think. Miskowitz. Miskowitz. Whose dad, by the way, pronunciations there a little bit. His dad, Lou, played at Notre Dame. Now, false start will set Ball State back. If you're the coach, Bill Lynch, you absolutely hate that. Yeah, you do. And that, see, those are the kind of things that, you know, make you two and eight, no and seven. Yeah, no question about it. You know, they, these are the kind of things that you have two struggling ball clubs that are trying to to win a football game. So second and goal now from the seven-yard line. Out of the eye. And the handoff is to Terrell. He bulls his way back down to right about where they were going to be anyway, about the two-yard line inside the two, maybe the one-yard line. Yes, indeed. Tackle made on the play by Orlando Bowen, who is making his presence felt more here in the second half, but the Huskies have got to buckle down here. Yes, they do, but they're just bringing those two big tackles right around on those two... Uh, smaller guys, Bowen and Smith, you know, they're just big guys. Put big guys on little guys. Big guys usually win those battles. Official timeout. You know, this is a big series here. It seems like uh, the Huskies have been dominating the game, but yet, you know, they're, um, Ball State is only two yards away from tying this game up. And it's really, you know, it can really be deflating to uh, NIU if they don't make a stop right here. Big third down for Ball State. And into the house, you got yourself a touchdown. James Terrell, that's two on the afternoon, and the Cardinals are within one point of tying this one up. Well, see, he, he's very excited right now. Uh, the Huskies' defense, their heads are down right now. They're feeling a little sorry for themselves. They're a young defense. They need to reach up and see what's inside of them here. You just saw the nice numbers. Nice blocking, nice down block by Aaron Johnson. Nice kick out block by Hastings. Now watch the block. I don't know if you can see from here. Johnson makes a nice down block there. And a good kick out. You got a guy like Terrell who's a very good north-south runner. Stays low. Easy touchdown. And the point after is also good. So not quite midway through the third quarter. Ball State has pulled into a tie with Northern Illinois. It's 14 aside. And this will give us a moment to talk, as you see James Terrell, to talk about Brent Locklear, Ball State's place kicker, because this guy is, in fact, something special. 
He had the game-winning kick in overtime last week against Central Michigan. He also has kicked 14. There he is right there. 14 consecutive field goals. That is a new school record. His next field goal, provided it's good, will be a new Mid-American Conference record, 15 in a row. Well, if he makes that, if he makes that field goal today, he's definitely going to earn it because this wind down there is swirling, and this wind could play a big factor in this game today. Right now, uh, Ball State has the win on their side, but it's still in the third quarter, so we'll find out how that plays into this game. Earlier today, Bowling Green gave Toledo a scare for a while, but the 24th-ranked Toledo club comes up and wins going away 35 to 20. Also in the MAC last we heard, Miami of Ohio had taken Cincinnati to overtime. They were tied at 31. Kent was leading Central Michigan 33-16 at the half. Akron 10, Ohio 7 at the half. And we will tell you a little bit more about college football and getting to the Big Ten in just a moment. Here's Locklear once again bidding for a berth as a semi-finalist for the Lou Groza Award. Kicks it not quite deep enough. Deion Mitchell takes it from the one, gets a block, and there goes Deion Mitchell. Mitchell toward midfield. He still won't go down. Into Ball State territory, Deion Mitchell puts a right cross on the Ball State special teams with a great return from his own one-yard line. They needed that. They needed that emotional boost on that team. I was going to say, how are they going to respond after coming back and being scored on? And as you see them, they, it's a basic right return. You see nice seal blocks there. Uh, McCarron's leading them right up the whole nice block there. Law's trying to screen them out. He just does a great job. Mitchell does. He's the guy that they want the ball in his hands as much as possible. Deion Mitchell, 55 yards on the kickoff return. First and 10 Northern from the Cardinal 43. Ivory Bryant piles in and somebody piles on and there's a flag. Late flag. That could either be holding or possibly a face mask. Dead ball foul after the play on the offense. 15 yards to the spot of the foul. Well, there it is. That's the second time they've had one of those today. It, another function of youth, perhaps. Mitchell, with a 23-yard average on kickoff returns, better than double that there. And a long march back for the Huskies. We don't know who that penalty was on, but these are the type of things that really hurt you. They're in plus territory off a great kick return. All of a sudden now they're, what, 25 yards back already or 22 yards back. You can't afford these type of things in a tight game like this. And a whistle for what? Let's take a look. The referee... Pat Holleran confers. Now, the head linesman is Michael Seacrest. Jamie McDonald was whistled for the foul. Now we're in play. Now, here's his slot. This is where McCarran's is dangerous. He's in the slot right now. He's done some damage in the past off of this. Hand off to Bryant. Ball State's defense seems to be playing with a little bit more energy, especially in the trench, Al. What do you think? Yeah, they are. You get a lot of energy. Once you score a touchdown, you know, everybody else gets hyped. They're, you're running on the sidelines. You're talking to each other. Come on, let's go now. Let's go. Let's get, we get, we're back in this game. And that's what's happened on their defensive end. Unfortunately for um, the Huskies, that penalty cost them big time as far as momentum is concerned. Well, and now it's third and very long right at midfield. They need 17 for a first down. Fake handoff. Finland tries to step up. This time he goes down. Big sack by Wilbur McDonald. Ninth sack of the season for McDonald. And Northern will have to punt. And see, when you get in those long, this, you know, those long, long yardage formations, that's when those fine pass rushers can tee off on you here. Now another Husky player is down on the turf. I think that might be Steve Smith. No, he'll probably, oh, oh, that wouldn't be Smith. Sorry about that. Oh, man. He fell back over uh, McDonald. Oh, that's Matt Cockrum, the left yeah, guard. Yeah, he fell right back over McDonald there. He, oh, goodness. 
And that's left that guard serious. understand oh. fans that this not only is this difficult personally for Cockrum you hate to see a guy go down like this but strategically it's difficult for Northern Illinois because Kent Booth their normal starter at left guard now what she's gonna is out hurt oh we can't see it from that angle too well but, uh, he just really got caught in the, oh now right here watch his leg get caught oh oh ouch cool. yeah, oh that, as a matter man. of fact that's mcdonald rolled up on him like that now booth is out wow. cockrum is out the guy listed as the backup at left guard is the guy who is at center greg miro who i think does he slide over now let's check those numbers we'll let you know what they've done to adjust but the punt away safely for kent baker Fair catch signaled, and wow, in traffic, what a nice job Tim Geisman did to flag that thing down. I think right now, Ball State has momentum right now. They have the wind at their back. Uh, plenty of time on the clock right now for them to come back on another drive. This is a 29-yard punt, by the way. Exactly. Now it's important for the Huskies. They need to get that defensive fired up. They need to get those guys going, playing enthusiastic. They're right in this football game. First and 10 for Ball State from the Cardinal 25. There's Bill Lynch. And the handoff to Cartwright. Big hole through the middle, stuttered, and then blew through. Good game. And that's the place they've been attacking right there. John Cade has been doing a fine job for Ball State at center. Um, Matt Earhart and Hasty has blown holes up that hole, uh, up the uh, NIU's line all day, right in between. Cartwright, powerful runner workhorse the more carries the coaches field the better that he is he's a two-time all-state player at jasper indiana elsewhere in college football today we mentioned that we would tell you about the big 10 the big game michigan at michigan state michigan wins 23 to 7 measurement that's a 10-yard gain for cartwright and a first down for ball state northern illinois one of five teams in the country looking for its first victory the u of i is another one of those and they continue that search after purdue goes to champagne and hammers the illini 48 to 3. speaking of hammered iowa 62 indiana nothing wisconsin squeaked past minnesota 22 21. Giuseppe, the handoff to cartwright and this time he gets strung out and taken down after a modest gain on the near sideline Patrick Steven once again, along with Kevin Selliver. A nice counter OT play there, but they attack it this time. Smith comes in there, makes them bounce out wide, and the host of the rest of the Huskies come in there. Gain of three, one other in the Big Ten. Uh, last we heard at the half, Ohio State had a 14 to six lead on Northwestern. So second and seven from the Ball State 38. Just setting the handoff to Moore, and this time he steps to the outside, cuts it back inside. If it had stayed outside near the sideline, Al, he might have had some big time room. He really put a nasty move there. Now watch this move. Whoops, look out. Man, this guy's a, a kick returner. I mean, you can see why with that shake. He had a defender step right up into the gap, and he ran right by him. Ran right by him, which is very poor technique, by the way. Ohio State beat Northwestern 21 to six. That's a final. And now the flea flicker from Moore back to Giuseppe, and this is Adrian Reese, and he has got the football. No, once again. Once again, the guy that's closest to the play says he has it, but the trailing official says no, and he actually had the better angle. Yeah, and, it, and he proved us wrong the other time when we thought it was a completion. This is when you can run these fake plays and you get the running game established really well. He has plenty of time to look downfield. I guess they said that you trapped it on the ground there. And you don't hurt yourself too badly when you do that on first down. No. No, not at all right now, especially the way they have it established. Now, play action. Just said he across the grain. He's got his tight end place. Nice tackle. Nice tackle by Donovan Carter. He's their surest. He tackles better than anybody else on that defense outside of Smith. Except he was. We got another Husky down, and that Perry is Perry Amu. 
Donovan Carter was the guy who stepped up in the gap the last play that Moore busted off the big run. Nice tackle right there by Carter. Ball State is six of eight on third down. They face a third and six. Amu is going to take some time off. Actually, we have to be fair on that one. Uh, it was Newton. The guy who caught the punt was the guy who got juked on that last play. Oh, Rocky Newton yeah, is that? Rocky okay. Newton. Yeah. I think Perry just got a little stinger there by a block, but he looks like he'll be okay. Northern is not deep. At three positions defensively, the guy who is listed as the second stringer is the first stringer at another place. Third and six at the 49 of Northern. And Terrell steps up, goes down, does not get the first. Kevin Sellover came in and sold out on that one. He shot right through there like a bullet. Makes a fine play. Sellover with help from Steve Smith. Watch Sellover coming from the right of the screen there. Makes a nice shot in there. Keeps his, keeps his wraps up, and Smith helps him finish him off there. That's what they needed for the defense, to give them some momentum there. So Ball State will have to kick it away, we think. So once you've seen one fake yeah, in a I game, know. you never quite trust nice it. Nice place to run it. <laughs> Fourth down, short yards go. What they were waiting for. And this one takes a big hop, and oh, oh he coffined that nicely. Great kick. On coffin situations, they often put the ball in Brent Locklear's hands, the place kicker, but that time Mike Tinder does a real nice job of putting it out of bounds. Huskies will start deep on their own turf after the 42-yard pooch by Tinder. I guess you could say Tinder tended to his business. I would say so. <laughs> hey, you know something? We talked earlier about easy now. We <laughs> talked earlier about Bill Lynch having worked for Corso here at Northern Illinois. He also coached with Joe Novak and Mark Hagan, who is a member of the defensive staff for Novak here at Northern. Lynch, Cor uh, Lynch, Novak, and Hagan were all together at Indiana, and there's more. Hang on. There's that swing pass to, to Dion Mitchell, and he jukes his way forward across the 10-yard line. I tell you what, that is a very risky call there. You know, when you're throwing a hitch there, if, if the guy guesses right, I mean, there is no chance there's going to be easy walk there. They that's like that play for Mitchell, though. Yeah, it's a very courageous call, but I guess they had him screened off there by McCarrens. That is a very risky play there. Ball State's assistant head coach, Ted Huber, coached here with Jerry Pettibone when Pettibone ran the program here in DeKalb. Another modest gain on second and three. That's Bryant. They're going to have to go third down. That's probably one of the hard things. They've had a lot of coaching turnover here, and that, and that can affect you in recruiting. And here's the line again. They've been getting pretty good movement for most of the time there, but not that time. Phelps came in there and made a fine play. We're not Jeff done with the, the with the family feud thing, but we'll do that after third down. Northern is 10 of 15 this afternoon. Third and three from the Husky 12. Finland looking long for Mitchell. Holds up and can't hang on as Carl Moore kind of fell over top of them. So fourth down, Northern will have to punt. That's that. Wynn held that ball up very well because uh, it looked like they might possibly for a moment have a play here. We showed you Dan Rauscher, the northern offensive line coach. Yeah, there's that ball there. He just held up. He almost was able, Mitchell was almost be, be able to make a play on that one, but not quite. Kent Baker is going to kick it out of his own end zone. And this one, wow, the wind. Did you see the way the wind just shoved that ball down? But it gets a northern bounce. And the Huskies down it. This win is going to play a very, very big factor. I just really feel before this game is over, this win's going to play a big factor in who wins and loses this game. Let's go back for a moment. Look at the way that that flag is sticking out down at the south end zone. That was a 30-yard punt for Baker. Joe Novak was Bill Mallory's defensive coordinator at Indiana. Bill's two sons are here this afternoon. Mike is Northern Illinois' defensive coordinator, and Kurt is Ball State's linebackers coach. Well, speaking of linebackers there, I tell you what, Mr. Smith there, <laughs> he visited uh, Cartwright pretty well in that play. Steve Smith, I mean, he is playing an outstanding game today. I mean, he's a senior. He's very fired up for this game. 
He needs to get the rest of those guys flowing like he is because he has come to play football today. Northern's tackle for loss leader got his first sack of the season as Cartwright grinds his way to the line of scrimmage and doesn't get a whole lot more. Well, Rocky Newton made like Sylvester Stallone on this play. I mean, he really rocked this guy pretty good. Watch Rocky Newton coming from the bottom of your screen there. Coming off a of blitz, number 20. Comes back, fills in that hole really well. Along with Kevin Sellover as well. Puts Ball State into another third down situation. Third and eight. Gisetti from the shotgun. Moore standing next to him, but he'll drop back. Takes a look. Downfield. Ball is intercepted. Ball is intercepted by Dwan Hawthorne for Northern Illinois. Dwan Hawthorne with his third interception of the season, and Northern Illinois stops Ball State on this drive late in the third quarter. And here it is. Now you watch him here. Hawthorne is dropping off. He's just looking back in his zone. Does a nice job. Keeps his eye on the ball. Steps right in between there. Excellent job by Hawthorne there. Larry Davis was the intended receiver, and the way that Hawthorne dropped off of Giesman tells you, I don't know if the quarterback was telegraphing it or Hawthorne just read a key and went there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was telegraphing. You got a very inexperienced quarterback there, Jake Gisetti there. Not a very accurate quarterback as we talked about before. And see, that's what part of zones are for. You know, you sit there and you, you get a good jam on your guy and you look back and you look for the football. And if you see it come in your area, you step up and make a break on it. He did an outstanding job. There was a flag on the play. It was an illegal block, personal foul on Northern. So once again, the Huskies put themselves further than they want to be. First and 10 at the 17. Bryant smothered. By the way, we weren't done with that family feud thing. Rauscher, the offensive line coach, was the offensive coordinator at Ball State when Paul Shudell was there, before Shudell came to coordinate the offense for Tepper at Illinois. So in other words, you're telling us they're not going to be fooling each other too. No, much. I don't believe so. And the other thing, though, is they're that this fine. is a, uh, these guys respect each other a ton. And uh, at the same time, you know, it's that friends rivalry thing. Okay, I worked with you. I want to beat you. I played with you. I want to beat you. But right now, nobody's beating anybody else because after three quarters, we are tied. Northern Illinois and Ball State. Fourth quarter coming up on Sports Channel. Join Tom Waddle, Dan Hampton, and me for Pro Football Weekly every Friday night at 10.30 on Sports Channel. The timing. The tenacity. The teamwork. <laughs> Women's Big Ten Volleyball is back on Sports Channel. It's the same action-packed game crammed into two hours. That means double the digs, double the spikes, in double time. Women's Big Ten Volleyball, exclusively on Sports Channel. So as we begin the fourth quarter at Husky Stadium in DeKalb, Northern and Ball State Tied at 14 with Al Harris. I'm Brian Davis. Welcome in. Second and eight Northern at the Husky 19-yard line. Finland. Play action. 
steps up, throws, gets buried. There's a flag on the play, roughing the passer is what it's going to be as Finland gets the ball off, pays the price, but then something good comes out of it for Northern. I think you got an interference down there, too, with uh, the corner. Carl Moore drops back, has plenty of time to throw. Man, he just got jacked. Yeah, he sure by did. Damon Hummel, who was an all-MAC player at nose tackle for Ball State in 1996. Last week in that thrilling game against Central Michigan, Hummel was a, a big player because he blocked the field goal in overtime. They wind up kicking the field goal to win in overtime. Special teams play so much into tight games. So first and 10 now at the 29-yard line. Finland scouting reporter on him says hey the guy will take a hit and come right back oh what a hit Dion Mitchell takes mm -hmm. but he's got a first down as Northern continues to move the football Raphael ball rings Mitchell's bell you, you can't speak enough about the protection look at it they're neutralizing guys on the line of scrimmage giving them plenty of time to throw nice little out move there by Mitchell Mitchell's been their primary guy we haven't seen McCarron's at all this game I mean, it's, I don't know if they've taken him totally out of the game or what, but maybe after last week they scouted like everyone else did and said, hey, we got to stop this guy. Receivers split to the far side. Yahi Garrett in the slot, the pitch to Bryant. He cuts it back inside, can't quite get away. Nice, sure tackle made by Howard Sims. Lou Spunzel had another nice block out there. It helps a lot when you have a good fullback that can block for you. Sponsel, a converted linebacker out of Fremd High School, and Ball State closed the gap a little bit, but Northern still in total yardage, almost 100 yards better. Uh, you, you see where the gap closes, Al, is in time of possession. Exactly. Second and eight. And Bryant, oh, gets, oh, man, I'll tell you what, somebody laid a pop on him. I think it was yeah, Sims. It was, I think it was Sims and Flowers also. Flowers kind of took it more in the chest than anything else here. Now watch Flowers number 93. He's right over the ball. Does a nice little spin move. He cuts back. Wow. Made that head jingle a little bit. No, and Leonard and Flowers was. Yes, sir. You said Sims and too. You called that right though. Flowers didn't move. <laughs> huh? How about that? He did not move. Well, that's what happens when a 205-pound running back runs into a 244-pound defensive lineman. There's that swing pass to Mitchell again. He's got room. Deion Mitchell turns on the speed. Oh, he gets tripped up at the 30-yard line by Carl Moore. Carl Moore saves a touchdown for Ball State. Deion Mitchell was looking to the house. A big key on this play, Justin McCarron makes a nice block here for Mitchell here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on this angle, but it's a quick throw. See McCarron's block right there, frees him right away. And he's off to the races there. Now Mitchell hobbled back to the puddle. Yeah, he's kind of, he's grabbing the back of his leg a little bit. I don't know if he pulled a ham slightly. He goes far side. McCarron's in motion also to the far side now. Offset eye. Finland to Bryant. Bounces off of one tackle, but man, he gets hammered. And oh, we've got a penalty flag, and we don't know why, because we are cut off from view there. Late hit, perhaps? Out of bounds, probably they may have called something like that. Guy might have kind of put a little extra into it as he was going out of bounds. Well, ball put him out first. Ball was the first guy to the ball, I believe, and then Jeff Phelps, the outside linebacker, came in. Personal foul defense. Fox. Ball okay. does a good job there. Oh, somebody else got, somebody else drove it. Actually, it wasn't even on uh, Bryant. Phelps drove Sponsel over oh, the pile there. But, okay. you know, I don't know. That's a that's a close call because it looked like something was happening there. Maybe, maybe the idea was that he kept his feet moving or whatever. Well, the officials have done a good job of making some calls all day. That's Rafael Ball standout cornerback for Bill Lynch and the Ball State Cardinals. Ball, Lynch. I think, is the fastest guy on their team. Runs a 4-3-5 or something, 40. Now, a lot of penalty yardage in this game this afternoon. 
That was a huge one because it gives Northern first and 10 at the 14-yard line of Ball State. Ivory Bryant, belly play, angles back inside, goes down at the 10. Now here's a place you know they have to think, protect the football, protect the football. I'm sure when you're getting this, that's what I'd be saying from the sidelines. Run hard, but you protect the football. Bryant takes it on the lead draw there. Not a lead draw, but just a lead play with the fullback. Second and six. Oh, big contact in the line. Presley. Bryant carries. Somebody stepped through. Was that Sponsel and just laid a big time lick on a defender just across the line of scrimmage as Bryant is stopped after a modest wow. game. Look Third and four at the eight. He is close to 200 yards. What a day he's having. By the way, left guard now that Matt Cockrum is out is Jeff Winyarski, number 63. He played his high school ball at Wabansi Valley. Hand off Bryant. Almost had one, but Jared O'Risky says, no, you don't, sir. Except yep. he probably didn't say sir. Now, the one thing Brian is, he's a little high here. Now, watch him. He, he's kind of, he's getting a little high. This is dangerous, right? See how he's standing up there. That's when you get stripped or the ball can get poked out of there. He has to be careful there. All right. Now, Brian Clark is going to attempt the field goal. Remember, he slipped last time. Northern is 3 of 10 on fourth down. This is going to be a 24-yard field goal for the lead. Ball, bad snap. Holder drops the ball, thrown into the end zone, and nearly caught anyway by the tight end swinging out. That was Bobby Reed, but the holder, wow. Kent Baker, can't hang on to the snap and then just heaves it into the end zone where he was very much. He just never had control of the snap. We couldn't see exactly whose fault that was and that he just never had control of the snap. Almost made the play even worse. It could have been an interception for a touchdown. So two attempted field goals. Just a bad snap there. It was there. a bad snap. And see, you, you, I mean, don't compound the thing. Throw the thing out of bounds because, I mean, those guys could have intercepted. They could have been off to the race. Well, that's exactly right. 14 is side. About 10 and a half minutes left here in the fourth quarter in DeKalb. It's kind of like an Italian loafer. It's kind of like a steel-toed boot. The Infinity QX4. Own one, and you'll understand. Close as your phone, PC, or local branch. We can do that. Hey, buddy, how's your nest egg coming? Stay tuned tonight on Sports Channel for Chicago Bulls basketball as the world champs prepare for their title defense in the final preseason matchup against Mitch Richmond in the Sacramento Kings. The pregame show starts at 7, followed by tip-off at 7.30 right here on Sports Channel. And look at this, Leandre Moore. Wow! Just from his own seven-yard line. Absolutely exploded out of there right there. Those, see, these are momentum changers on in the football game. When you blow opportunities like that in the red zone, not scoring, come back to haunt you. A 39-yard play for Leandre Moore, who was held down in the first half, but gets a great seam here. Great seam there. Very fortunate that they were able to run him down there. First and 10 at the 46-yard line. And Terrell, I think that is. Man, that's a huge pile there as Northern doesn't buy a thing that the Cardinals are trying to sell. And this is the type of seat. They had a lot of guys around the ball this time, Northern did. Now watch the line there this time. 
They stand people up, getting people to the football. Credit Dan Stankowski with that tackle for a minor loss. Still second and Presley 10. also in there. Out of the shotgun. Just said he's going to throw if he gets time. Miskowitz. And pressure. And the pass is intercepted. Perry Amu. Perry Amu. That's what happens when you get a young quarterback trying to make plays. He's trying to make a play. It broke down here. He does a great job of just staying alive there. Oh, you got a whole takedown there that was missed. Well, see here, Miskowitz, and then Terrell Alexander comes in from the end. Okay, and Miskowitz never gives up on the ball. And look at that. Amu just steps right in front of Mike Pickett, the fullback. He did a great job there. Those are the type of things that can just give coaches headaches all day long. Now, Brian tripped up right at the line of scrimmage, but Northern is in business. Northern's got the wind at their back. Ivory Bryant, that's his 43rd carry of the afternoon. One more ties the Northern Illinois record of 44 set by Alan Ross in 1979. Bryant with 43 carries and 190 yards. Second and 10 at the 48. Northern has been in the red zone a lot today. Got to capitalize on it, though. Here's Finland. Steps up. Gets a little running room. Northern has been in the red zone today four times, by my count. Doesn't count Bryant's 22-yard touchdown run. He scored on another run of one yard. Two missed field goals and a fumble. Northern, until then, coming into this game, 11 times in the red zone. Only 11 times total total so you know four on that i mean you're talking a pretty good increase today fakes the swing pass goes long for mccarran's a little too far oh they did a nice little play there did a little pump and go there trying to catch mccarran's that's the first time they've even looked his direction today fourth down a little pump just released it a little too early the play was there Quarterback knew he missed that one. Watch, watch his reaction here. Ah! <laughs> Look at him. Love the enthusiasm oh. these guys show. You know something? That's one thing. As the punt. Oh, oh man. Hit the guy right on the foot. You got to have that's You know, when you're getting down there, they teach you to look for the football. Once you get down, situated, turn and look for that ball, locate that ball. And uh, he just didn't do a good job on that one. That was Cameron Salisby. And a touchback is the result. Actually, that's Rock. I think it's uh, Newton there, Rocky Newton. Well, Rocky Newton. Yeah, there it is. Rocky Newton, by the way, is getting all kinds of time here in the second half because of the injury previously to Buster Sampson mm -hmm. over there in the corner. And look for them to see that and go after him as well. First and 10 at the 20. Hand off to Cartwright around the right edge. Gets three, maybe four. Inside eight minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Perry Moose been all over the field there. So you're getting guys up there making good plays. Patrick St Stevens right there. Should have made that play. That was Perry Moose's first interception of the season. Perry Moose has been all over the field today. I've seen him a couple times in the past, and he is a guy who, again, he's one of the he's one of the older hands here, and he plays with a lot of energy. Now here is Terrell. He's a big physical quarterback. A couple of times you've seen guys around him when they're getting ready to sack him. It takes a few guys to bring that big old horse down. 6'3", 231. He's a big man. The one thing that you could accuse Jake Gisetti of doing, though, is getting a little tentative when he runs the football. Well, he, 
you know, he is a little tentative. He, he's still quarterback, but uh, he's a big guy. He's hard to bring down. Third and one. Gisetti keeps. And so the drive remains alive, first and ten. Uh, you've got to keep low on your quarterback. Keep your shoulders down. Just get right behind that center. Smith did a nice job of coming up in there, but it was a uh, very short distance to go. It's very hard to stop if you don't have your goal line defense in there. For Ball State today, something that as we get here past the mid stages into the latter stages of the fourth quarter, Ball State uh, survived what has become a, an awful third quarter situation. Giussetti looking to pass covered up the pass is complete there the pass complete to montez curran who was just kind of hanging around in the flat first down ball state nice play action once again i've talked about it time and time again when you establish the running game then you can do other things with it 16 yards on the play he has plenty of time there he's just let wide wide open that comes off a of play action pass First and ten, midfield. Ball State 48 to Setti. And the handoff to Terrell. Gets through the line. He's knocked down by Donovan Carter, but a nice gain, about seven yards on the play. Ball State, again, they've struggled this year, but, you know, they still feel like, hey, we have a championship program. And in a close game against a younger team don't you have to give the edge to ball state well right now but a little more experience they've won before they're still you know niu still looking for their first victory and this is a big key here second and two terrell turns the corner finds a gap see this is something you if you're if you're the huskies you got to put you got to strike this guy terrell he's just running at will he's just he's running with a lot of confidence no one's coming up to meet him it's force on force someone has to bring a hat on him just great blocking on the inside he's just running very aggressively and you got to meet force with force when people are coming at you like that 11 carries 68 yards and the two touchdowns first and ten at the Husky 33. Cartwright this time around the left edge. Gets a block, slips a man. He continues inside the 10-yard line. Should be first and goal, Ball State. They're just taking over this game right now. Cartwright, they have three very, very good backs. And you can see why they rotate these guys. Terrell, Moore, and Cartwright, all of them are running very well. Nice kick out block by the offensive line there. You got a backup cornerback there that uh, made a bad, bad tackle. And he almost goes for six right there. Look at this. He's a backup, and he has 90 yards, 6.9 yard average. They've been waiting for this guy. You know, he's only a sophomore, too. Mentioned earlier, the more carries he gets, the coaches feel that he gets stronger. So they'll just keep going to him, I would imagine. And the story of this Bowen. game is just continual missed tackles. Tackle after tackle after tackle. When they see this on film, look at that. He should have, Bowen should have made that play right there. That's another miss. Ball State trailed Miami 13 to 10 at the half. Purdue was a seven to six game at the half. Indiana was close, but blew up in the third quarter. Ball State outscored 89-26 in the third quarter. So the Cardinals are over on the far sideline. I guarantee you thinking this has got to be our day. Joe Setti, touchdown to the fullback, Mike Pickett. Ball State has gone two or four Pickett three times this afternoon, and it has paid off with a huge touchdown late in the fourth quarter. And you can't help but think about the t opportunities that have been blown by NIU and the red zone with the missed field goals and the fumble right before halftime. Now that comes into play. They're down six, possibly seven, well, probably with the All-American kicker here with 3.44 to go. Brent Locklear. Nice protection there. Easy TV. For the point after, it's good. Locklear. Now 16 of 16 on points after a nine-play, 80-yard drive. Took 4.22 off the clock. 
And Ball State has taken the lead late, 21 to 14 here at Northern Illinois. Along with Al Harris, I'm Brian Davis. And Mike Pickett coming into this game. He's an All-State player, by the way, not too far away from Chicago and Lowell, Indiana. Uh, Pickett, one reception, one catch for one yard. That goes back to the fact that you spread it around and in important moments you catch the other guy just not expecting it. That, yep. that's, that's depth, huh? That's yep. variety. They've had 12 guys that have caught at least one pass, Ball State. Yeah, they have. They've done a good job of moving that ball around. And, you know, when you, you get established with the running game, you can do anything you want to do. Look at that. I mean, this guy's been playing hurt today. Look at that bandage. I mean, football, you know, a lot of times you get, the, get those scabs of blood, sweat, and maybe some tears on that NIU sideline. Well, and they have worked their tails off today. Joe Novak told us at halftime that they made a lot of judgments this year about younger players being better than the guys who have been around. That's obviously contrary to the usual sequence of things in college football. But the older guys didn't get their job again. They have continued to play hard. Now they'll put the ball on the ground and it's gonna to go to McCarran. He has trouble fielding it. It's the 20 yard line. Oh, he takes a step back and then takes a step forward. Gets to the 27 yard line before he is driven out. Big hit again, Kevin Cartwright. That was almost a disaster right there. Now this is the big key now. What do you do? You got a 333 left. You're on the, about the 29 yard line. Three timeouts. They have time. They have the time to move the football. Now this is really going to test their young quarterback, uh, Chris Finland's poise and character here. You know that Ball State's going to put the ears back. Uh, it takes Bryant in a way almost out of the game. I, you can still get in the ball maybe a time or two, but you're going to have to speed it up a bit. First and 10 from the 27-yard line. Back to pass and under pressure, and down he goes. There's McDonald. Wilbur McDonald with his 10th sack of the season. Now, this guy learned to play some big-time football. You know playing for Frank Lenti at Mount Carmel High School and then playing at Harper College in the Chicago suburbs. Now, as you see the covers right there, man, he had a... He had Mitchell out there just kind of running. A, I guess he was kind of running a, a delay pattern there, but just great pressure. Loss, loss of 12. Now the pass out into the flat. This is Sponsel, the fullback, gets some of that lost yardage back. The two games, uh, protection for the quarterback, as I mentioned earlier, Al, was a real issue early. The last two weeks, Northern's quarterback had only been sacked twice. Mm -hmm. But today, obviously, uh, in a pressure situation, Ball State has broken through. Yeah, they have, but they, they really haven't broken through that much. But only time they do is when they get a, in a bad situation. Now you have a penalty, and we don't know what this is for. Is it delay? No. 12 seconds on the game clock, or rather on the play clock. Not a penalty, unless this is too many men. Well, sometimes too illegal substitution. Yeah, what happened is, what happens is, you know, sometimes you'll like have 12 or 13 guys in the huddle and you can't do that. You're trying to cross up the defense. Oh. I tell you what, these officials have really been on top of this game today. They have called a great game. A great game. They really have. They have really been on top of it. Pat Holler and the referee, Robert Silber, the umpire, Michael Seacrest, the head linesman, Jeff Bauer, the line, Judge Field, Judge Don Edwards, back Judge Thomas Workman, and side Judge Robert McElwee. Way to go, boys. That kills you. It's third down and 19. You gotta make a big play. Over everybody. And As who, who's the culprit once again? Mr. McDonald. Wilbur McDonald, number 56, makes probably at this point with a minute 58. They still got three timeouts left, but that could be the game's biggest play. This is putting a lot of trust in your defense, and look at Ball State. See, they, they finally tried to go to McCarran, but they haven't went to him much today, which was a little strange, but uh, obviously you have your own things there. Geesman gets away from Newton. Not, however, from Bill Bruni. Freshman free safety. 
But once again, another missed tackle gives Ball State a little bit better field position. Yeah, you got to make those plays. The Cardinals, by the way, have lost five in a row on the road. They are bidding to break that streak. Northern Illinois, again, trying to avoid deepening the nation's longest losing streak in Division 1A. It would be 15 unless they can pull something out here in the last minute 50. Well, you need to try to strip this ball. It's one guy hold him up, the other guy get that ball out of there. More. You got to rip hard. They got three timeouts here. Moore driven down by Lewis Miskowitz. I'm surprised they're not calling the timeout. It's a minute 33 and counting. Why did they wait? Why aren't they calling the timeout? It's a minute. I don't understand this. Maybe, maybe you, you, you get one more playoff. Okay, you put them into third down, and on third down you stop them. But, of course, that lets a lot of time run off the You're clock. You're letting a lot of time run off the clock. I, I don't understand why they're not calling the timeout. You got three timeouts left. Wow. Terrell around the corner. Oh, wow. Under a minute. Maybe they're trying to give their, maybe they're trying to give their offense uh, a couple of timeouts left. Now, Northern. She ate up a lot of time on that last one. Yeah, I can, I can see it in a way, Al, in that, okay, now you put them third down. Here you make the stop. You know that you can't let, you know that they won't eat any more clock on you if you make the stop on third down. Call timeout here on third down, timeout on fourth down. If you stop them, that gives your offense one. Yeah, but obviously they're going to punt the ball if they don't make it. They'd be foolish not to punt the football. Oh, right, so if they oh, call right. a timeout here, they'll still have a timeout left. No, I'm saying so that you can't, going now going from second to third down, you got a timeout. Going from third down to fourth down, you got another timeout. You can freeze the clock there. They punt it, you get it back, and your offense has one timeout. Jake Giussetti, not spectacular, but his guys have gotten the job done, and he has gotten the job done when he has needed to. Yeah, he's kept himself alive, a couple big scrambles, but the secret of them, really, actually, for both teams, have been the running game. Both of them have ran very well against each other. NIU has given up 4.6 yards of average per, for the season, and I'm sure they're giving up close to that or even more today. Out of the shotgun. And Josetti oh, keeps it. Look at boy. that. Just naked. First down and more. This is the ball game. Josetti still driving down to the 20-yard line and finally forced out of bounds by Dewan Hawthorne. That's, that broke their back right there. Flag on the play. But that's still, I mean, it, it's probably something after. That's good, right. That's not going to be enough. Or to, it's a holding. But that's now not going to be enough to keep him out of first down. See, Perry Amu, if, if we can see that one more time, Perry Amu had to contain, and he wasn't looking He wasn't looking to the quarterback. And this is what happens a lot of times with teams trying to make plays. They haven't won a game. You've got to be disciplined in the defense. Well, you know the thing about it, though, the way that they've run that play all day long, every time they have run that fake, he's handed it off. That's the first time he's gone on the boot. But see your responsibility. See, when you're a defense man, you play in or the linebacker. When you see him coming down there, well, we can't see it from that angle. It's very quick from the right. But your first responsibility is you've got to check that quarterback before you go down the line because you're not going to make that play right away. So, you know, You've got to make sure you play your responsibilities. But now it's first down. They have two timeouts left. That's the death blow for the Huskies. Cartwright into the line. Joe Novak gathered his guys during practice on Wednesday and told him of a fax that he got from a former player who had been here and had seen them play against Vanderbilt. Again, that turned out to be a 17-7 loss to a good, uh, it was not good, they've been good in the past, they're a little down this year, but an SEC team that has had some success. This former player told Joe Novak, in 13 years coming to, to games here, that's the hardest I've ever seen your guys play. I'll tell you what, today, Northern Illinois has played its collective rear end off. Credit, big time 
Ball State has made plays when it has had to. Again, maybe that's the championship mentality, but it, it has been a good game. Yeah, it has been a very good game, but, you know, at the same time, you see this is a team. This is why they're 0-7. They can't capitalize when they have to. I say good. Can, can I use, use the word entertaining? Well, it was, a, it was a good game. It's a good game to watch. It's a good game to watch. It was very close, but once again, you come back to a team that has those opportunities, and they just can't close the door. I mean, that, I just keep thinking about right before half. If they go up 21-7, to 7, I think it's a total different game, but you can't blame it on Bryant because he had an outstanding game overall. Housekeeping department, Brent Locklear didn't get a chance to set the MAC record with his 15th consecutive field goal, but his three points after touchdown give him a new Ball State record. Mm -hmm. And look at Coach Joe. I mean, I... I know he's sick to his stomach. He knows once again here they had opportunity. This is probably their best chance for victory this year. Right here in their home stadium, and they weren't able to uh, make those plays. Well, they've got Ohio University. Then Eastern Michigan, which is uh, possible. And then they close the season against Miami, which would be tough. And Giussetti just backs out of the pile and flips the ball to the referee hollering. And that's going to be it. Well, you have to give credit to Ball State. They hung in there. It looked like they were getting ready to uh, really be in trouble. And they've hung in there. And Coach Bill Lynch. Bill Lynch comes part. back to DeKalb. And Ball State breaks a five-game road losing streak, beating Northern Illinois. 21 to 14 back in a moment to wrap it up in DeKalb.